to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Total Protonic Reversal. Protonic Reversal. Protonic Reversal. With your host, Conan Neutron. Broadcasting from a secret underground lair in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. A gigantic middle finger to everything that is rock about music, rock and roll, and corporate power. The thing is, though, if you don't laugh, you're going to go on a killing spree with shot and nails. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Confidence of a hero or a fool, I wasn't exactly certain which. Could not be more professional. It's so- It means something. It means something. And they got away. Yeah. You know, that's my take on it. Like, what's yours? Protonic, Protonic Reversal! That's like a science thing, right? Indeed, indeed, indeed it is. It is a science thing. It is a science place. It is a scientific fact that we are all up in your face. It is time for the one, the only... Protonic Reverso! Welcome to it, welcome to it, welcome to it. Tonight, a legend. A legend for me. Uh, Mr. Rick Froberg. What a cool guy. Uh, ha- drive like Jehu, Hot Snakes, Obits, Pitchfork, and also just kind of one of my favorite visual artists as well. Like, let's, you know, uh, album art, flyers, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Really, really rad guy. I'm super looking forward to this. Uh, this is awesome. If this is your first time uh, with Kona Neutron's Protonic Reversal, welcome to it. Uh, it's always protonicreversal.com for the archives. Always free. Always, always, always. Uh, Patreon.com slash protonicreversal. Get the episode sooner in podcast form. We're just going to get right to it. We're going to talk to Rick Froberg. I'm, I'm excited to have him on. I've kind of, I've, I've, it's, he's, a, he's an awesome guy, and I think this this will be really fun, as you might might be able to tell him uh, Kind of a big fan. <laughs> so looking forward to talking to Rick here, and uh, let's just get right down to it, boppers. With Mr. Rick Froberg. Hey. Rick, welcome to the show, man. Thanks so much for doing uh, this. Thank you. Let's talk about that. Uh, there's some kind of newsworthy you know, uh, stuff going on here with the uh, people bootlegging stuff, dude. What's, go- what's going on with this? How did this come to your Oh, attention? okay. So this, is, so this is just like, okay, so this is something to talk about. Um, all right. So, like, somebody whatever dm me a couple people dm me on um on instagram say hey check this out and it's like this like this this sort of uh basically the drive like jehu gang crime cover but it says creamy ink <laughs> look i thought i thanked the guy and i'm like okay cool and then i was like yeah what else is new it's this happens all the time it's like uh you get you get, you get sick things like that it's like it's like it's something that's even worth dealing with then i like did a search yeah and it's just like it's like so many so every just everyone is getting knocked off, and just and it's just these people who are just it's just so cynical and awful. They're just they're just taking these people's band names and their art and just making money off it. And like and the people who did all this work get nothing. And it's like musicians aren't having a great time right now. It's like it's not like this is a this is a right. great time to be like you know leeching off us. It's just it's just a. Uh, it's not cool, and it's just it's it's it's, it's everybody. It's so many people that are doing this too. It's just it's insane. Yeah, I mean, it, and it's doubly insulting to be yeah creamy ink, where it's like very clearly the the ink blotter uh, yank crime. Uh, just for, for those. Well, at least they changed it a little bit. The, I mean, the, the other stuff. But I, I looked up this drive by Jehu, and it yeah. was like it was just like shirt after shirt after shirt after face mask. After, this, none of this stuff has anything to do with us. Yeah, yeah. We have we have, you have we have like a shop where you can go buy stuff, and the band gets a like not a dime from any of this. You don't get anything, and it's like, and then, and they have all these, and you look at the site, and, and it says like created by blah 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 blah, and it's like always a different name. I bet you it's like three screen printing companies or something like that who are yeah. doing all this, and and I don't know. I just I just thought that's just it's just so lame. <laughs> it's, and, and, it is. Yeah. And that's my people. That's my people getting ripped off. It's like, it's not just, it's not, you know, it's, you know, I definitely don't want to get ripped off. I don't want people making money off stuff that we can make money off of. I don't think that's cool at all. No. So we need the money in order to continue doing this, you know, with nothing coming in. Well, so it's, get... just, it's, 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 it's like, it's, it's just right now, especially 
Maybe it's just I need something to be angry at. That's, that's, that's <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. Well, I mean, it's, but that's pretty infuriating because it's not just like they're even doing it at this one time. It's like they're just ripping off all these designs and passing off of, as their own work. And that's, I mean, there's a word for that. <laughs> you know, like, come yeah, on. Yeah, theft. I mean, it's theft. It's what, it's what it is. It's like, yeah. it's, it's a... But the thing that really made me mad about it is like, it's like, well, lots of things made me mad about it. But what makes me mad is, is that you go to their site and there's like this, this whole, it's not arcane, but this stupid process you have to go through to like, to sort of like, you know, dispute the, this and, and infringement or whatever. It's like, it's like, like, no, no, take it down. It's like, it's like, do I have to go to each, each one of these sellers and be like, you know, we're going to come break your legs. Take, take this, take this stuff down. It's, it's right. like. Like, in order to get satisfaction, you have to kind of deal with, like, the wild west of the internet. Well, it's, 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 it's like it, the onus is on you to prove that it's your artwork. Right, it's like, exactly. no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, what the hell is that? It's it's just, yeah, we're selling this. We didn't ask you. We just, we're just selling it. Oh, prove it's yours. I'll give it. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, it's like. That's, what, that's why I kept mentioning Peter Grant. Yeah, He's yeah. like the le- you know, the famous Led Zeppelin manager who would, who would just go, go in there with a cricket bat and start, like, smashing things. And then that would be that. <laughs> yeah. He, I mean, he, he, he it's, pays it's you like, visit one time and you don't you don't want a second time. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to sound like a fascist or anything like that, but I just I just don't, I just, I just think this is just such a bureaucratic nightmare of nincompoopery. It's just like, so you think of just, oh, I'm just, just going to rip people off, you know? I mean, make money off of well because that's, that's not cool when especially because it's you know okay so you know do you think they'd be able to pull this off if they were like ripping off like the coke logo or something along those lines no you know they, they wouldn't try to pull that off but it's like oh they're probably like oh well they sure you know. well they might try to pull it off and somebody would and somebody would be like cease and desist like yeah. they'd be coke coke would be on it like they think disney or coke or maybe you know like metallica or something like that i don't know the people are vigilant about that stuff and they um, I didn't see any minor threat uh, merchandise up there, by the way. I, I looked, I saw stuff that was like alluded to minor threat, and I'm like, you know, can not close my eyes? Or whatever, that's even today. Um, something, you know, stuff like their slogans or their lyrics or whatever, but there was no, their presence, there was, they, they didn't have a presence there. So it makes me think that, like, Ian is like, uh uh-uh. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Exactly. He's just, he's just like, yeah, this is just, he's, he's, what do you think you're doing here? Because uh, that's not happening. Uh-oh. <laughs> Which, uh, but that leads into like an, kind of an interesting point, right? Because with punk rock and stuff, you don't you don't exactly think of the words punk rock and copyright law <laughs> being hand in hand. But it's I mean this it is this is literally someone stealing like iconic art, iconic art, and taking away money from the people that actually you know need it right now. Yeah, as, as and you that's bad, there's stuff. It's not even iconic art. It's stuff like it's like bad posture T-shirt, you know, bad posture, like or Sin Thirty Four, like. Bands like this, like that are like, right. it's just like it's just like throwing, you know, throwing the proverbial poop at the wall to see what sticks or whatever. They just like just just doing it. It's like I don't know. Maybe they even do it in order or something. I'm, I'm not sure if you can like. You know, oh, we're gonna print up like you know two thousand Sin Thirty Four shirts. I mean, I don't know what they do. I don't know what their business model is, but it's like it's just it's just lame. And like, that's the guys from Sin Thirty Four could use a little money. <laughs> you know? Right. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> yeah, they're not exactly high rolling, right? <laughs> Probably like real estate agents or something. I don't know, but like, it's just uh, yeah, just something that gets my goat. Right? And I think that uh, I would like, I would, I would like it to get. That's why, I like, in the post or whatever, I put like at 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 at. I don't, I don't know if I got all the actual Instagram handles right. That's right. what I'm like. You should see this. I mean, think about this. It's it's just like it's lame, man. It's 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 uh. It should, be, it should be stopped, not just just, be, just because we don't need to get ripped off anymore. Than we're all getting already getting ripped off, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it's 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 kind of one of those things that there's not a lot of ambiguity to this. Like, there, what like what's the other side of this argument? There's no moral ambiguity, but there might be legal ambiguity. Yeah, it, it's it's like I, that's we want yeah. to do whatever we want to do. We want to steal. Right. Well, we're stealing because because we can and because. You know, you know, I understand, man. You got to make some money. I get, I get it. It's like yeah. that's that's a. And if you can, man, I, you know, this is America, man. You got to do. You gotta do. But like, <laughs> but you know, 
you're our enemies and we're going to take you down because because we want the money. Right. That's our money. That's, yeah, yeah. that's it's, it's it's basically just an economic. They're probably just placing the you know ma- making kind of like an internal bet that either you know the band won't notice or if they do they won't be able to do anything without to stop them. And the bet's been paying off, man, because you look at that site, and it's like, how is this here? How, how, how I mean, how is there a site where you, you can just, just like, I'm sure that's not the only site, by the way. I'm sure there's lots of yeah. examples of this all over the place. But, like, but this was so brazen, and the scale of it was just so amazing to me. It was like, it was like everyone getting knocked off. I mean, you name it. They're, they, I mean, it's like I look. I, th- I there was a few things I couldn't find. I like, oh, see, this is a favorite. Most things I looked up, I could find. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> and yeah, okay, it's you know, a 13th floor elevator shirt. They probably don't print those anymore, or <laughs> whatever. Yeah, yeah, but, but you know, if you're gonna do that, you should at least figure out who owns the estate of that or whatever, or is left. And like, hey, you know, like, they make 13th floor elevator t-shirts. That's cool. We'll cut you in. That's all you have to do. Well, it's interesting to me that there's like, so there's the creamy ink one, right? And there's ones that right. also just say drive like Jehu in <laughs> crime. So it's like, you, you well, that's, that's, that's the cream. The creamy ink one is like, is like, okay, well, fine. Yeah, that's, that sucks, whatever. but okay. It's dumb. It's dumb. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't understand. That's, that's a, and also creamy ink, it's, that's like, it's like one of those words like moist or something. It's like, it's like, <laughs> It has it has this. It just sounds terrible. It's like it's. Why would anybody buy a t-shirt that had creamy ink on it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe like Japanese people or something like that who didn't really understand what that meant. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It's it's a uh, it's just really strange. Um, well, but yeah, the the, the 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 really bad thing is the actual band merch where they actually just take the cover, which is like the easiest cover in the world to like. It's just basically line art. <laughs> it's like, yeah. And then you just make a t-shirt out of it and like. And uh, apparently, there's people who still like Drive Like Jay out there, and they'll buy them. So, yeah. Well, and, I, and it's like I, I love we a, get the money. A, of all money. the ones that are that are in there too, uh, one of them is the wipers. As if Greg Sage mm-hmm. hasn't freaking been ripped off enough, you know? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> it's, there's so many. It's it's everybody. It's everybody. Yeah. It every on, on like unless it, probably even like Bruce Springsteen is getting ripped off there. I mean, it's like yeah. it's just. How is this? I just think, how is this not? How is this okay? <laughs> I don't get <laughs> yeah. it. It's like, I just don't understand. Like, how do you justify it? I guess it's just like you know, I don't know. They because we can. No one tells us we couldn't. <laughs> Which is like, all right. But, well, again, this is, this is America. This, that's how this is how it works. But like, just like, it's it's just it's just like we're all getting ripped off by these people. Yeah. And I understand. Yeah, you try to make a buck, whatever, cool. But fuck you. That's our money. It's that's pretty much all. That's that's pretty that's pretty much the all I really want to say about it. But I would like to bring it to people's attention. You know, and it's not, like the, spirit, not the spirit of activism, but in the spirit of not getting ripped off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're, don't, you're getting don't, ripped off. Don't give these guys. Right. Don't don't just, give these guys. It's purely. It's purely like, this is bullshit. Yeah. You know. Okay. Uh, so that that that's actually a decent place to start. Like that's a you know again I, I said it's an iconic album cover and I, and I mean it. Um, how'd you come up with the idea for that one? Because that's a, for the, of course for the second Jehu record, not the self-titled. I remember exactly what I was doing. I was I was walking along the shores of uh, Lake Del Dios, and uh, which is kind of in uh, northern San Diego County, sort of peaceful place, mm-hmm. looking at the lake. And the idea the idea of the, the ink bottle just came to me, and I just went and drew it. It took the whole art, the whole process took probably fifteen minutes. And that, and uh, I did a, I did a few different ones, and I and they're all lousy, and they all look kind of like you know like Raymond Pettibone. Um, but I was like, eh, that's cool. <laughs> it didn't, that didn't bother me. <laughs> so, so that's, uh, I just, I just, uh, I just drew the picture and I like cheap sketch paper and a bunch of times. And that, that was one I liked best. And I put the, uh, I just wrote to write like you with a marker, just taped it down and that was it. And that's the cover. I mean, and it's, it's, I think it rules because it's something that, um, it's almost like I, I heard a. It's a podcast or something. They were talking about what makes a good flag, like a state flag or a city flag. Oh, I, I love flag. flags. I yeah. love flags. I love them a lot. And I don't wh- like. I don't like what, you know. I don't like wave one, but I but I, I like. Uh, <laughs> but well, I like them. Well, and one of the criteria is that like it. Uh, and I can't remember. I'm gonna butcher this, but but it was something along the lines of like, yeah, a kid should be able to draw it with a marker and a piece of paper. 
And I was like, oh, yeah. Well, it's most flags, right? Well, I mean, but they... Well, these city flags, a lot of times, they'll like... State flags. There's some state flags that are like... Yeah, they put a bunch of nonsense Maine in Maine or whatever. It's like, it's like they, and they, they drop, it's like a blue field, and they drop the, uh, all the graphics, which are complicated, right into the middle of the flag, which is just enormous. It's just like, why don't, you blow up, why don't you blow up the graphic a little or something? Um, it's just a funny... It's like, how did you actually make those flags back when, before there was like digital printing and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and it, not, it, it totally fails plus that they revert, they, Then they, they reverse, and they have, sometimes they have letters on them. Right. They have, they have, and so what happens when they reverse? It's backwards. It's totally, it's, it's totally weird. So 50% of the time you see this flag, it's, it's backwards. And then they'll put, like, words all over it, too, and, like, just... Hmm. <laughs> there's all kinds of just yeah, weird, like... Yeah, that's what I'm like, saying. It's like, it's like, it's like, it just doesn't make sense. Like, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? <laughs> what's, what's your favorite flag? And, and part of that's almost like a, you know... I, it, it seems like it's designed by committee or something, right? Well, I'm sure it is. What's what's your personal favorite uh, national flag? I mean, I like all the simple ones. You know, like uh, what, like France has got a good one. It's like, hey, here's here's the colors, right? Uh, there's the one. The tricolor, yeah. That's a, that's a anything anything that's it's like a good one. It's a good one. You can Looks immediately good. be like, oh, I, like Japan, Japan. That's a freaking great flag. Are you kidding? That's me? That's a great flag. I have like the Bangladesh one where it's where it's uh, it's it's uh, that same flag only the the background is green, which is which is even more like I. Oh yeah, 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 yeah! It almost looks like a, uh, one of those um, because uh, it's a green, it's like green and red, right? So it's almost like one of those. Yeah, yeah. Since it's, it's the... like it's, it's like almost like a shitty olive green or something. I mean, you know, it's like maybe a dark green, but it it, it really it really pops. It's like a it, it's a, it makes your eyes vibrate yeah. like that. Yeah, I'll take that over something that has like a whole bunch of text and like a you know a freaking. Text is usually not a national flag, though. That's that's just too complicated. Yeah. Like text is all. I can only think of text on like state flags, or like ancient standards or whatever. Right. I think I, what's like you know my one of my favorite flags is the Turkish flag. I think that one looks really good. Don't they? Ha- isn't uh, there the one that's got it's that a star and cre- it's a star and crescent? Yeah, 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 White yeah, yeah, star yeah, yeah. crescent on a red field. It's the most 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 beautiful flag. I also have a color color red too, but so I also like the Swiss flag. I like the uh, Israeli flag. The Greek flag is really great. Um, the Nazi flag is really great. <laughs> That's a really good flag. <laughs> yeah, as far as like flags go, it's, yeah. As far, as far as, I mean, it looks really good. Um, the was it Albania that has like the two headed like eagle looking thing? That's too complicated for me. I like I like oh yeah, I like the Estonian flags. I like the cover colors. They're they're white, like royal blue and black. It just did, and and they're uh, horizontal and, and it's, it's a great flag. I don't know why it just looks. It makes you think, ah, oh, nice. This country must be nice. There's is it like a, is Angola the one with the fork where it looks like a pitchfork or something where there's like a, a, you know like a trident, of? like a trident. Yeah, the trident. Yeah, 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 that's the one. Yeah, it looks like uh, Aquaman's uh, freaking weapon or something. <laughs> I have a computer right in front of me. I'll look, I'll look it up. And gold. The Jamaica one's cool because it's um like an X. And oh, like, like the Angolan gold. flag is actually awesome. Yeah, yeah. Or two. Um, it's awesome. Ooh, that's a heavy flag. Yeah. It's like, it's like the straight up like, FSNL, FSLN or whatever flag. Like it's like just red bar, black bar, and this must be a communist country. They're like and and it's like a half of a of a a cog or a sprocket or whatever you call it. Teeth yeah. half for the crescent. Then the star. And the thing coming through the, the crescent, which is the cog, is a machete. And it's clearly a machete. Are you kidding me? Really? That's awesome. <laughs> that's a heavy flag, man. <laughs> that's it's a, a machete. That's a tough Dude, flag. That's, 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 that's like, oof. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, you don't mess with Angola, man. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, exactly. To make a statement without saying a word, you know? Mm. <laughs> you know exactly what's up immediately. Wow, that's yeah. great. Uh, so anyway, what, yeah, what I was driving at that is that like, I think that the, uh, Yankram cover, you know, it's so, it, it's so simple, but it's, it's like easily reproducible. Well, that's the idea. And it was, and it's, I was trying to make an icon and yeah. the idea to me, the idea to me was a cool idea. I thought it was an iconic idea. So, 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 and that's all I needed. And like, I also wanted, because the music is so, it's a lot to ask people to sit and listen to Drive by J.H. record, I think. And it's like, I just wanted to make it less, just. Let, you know, say it with lead, you know, not with like a bunch of packaging. Just, yeah. I just wanted to, just, just wanted to make it really, really, really simple. I, I, I mean, I'm really into packaging and all on every level, and I think that um, a lot of my favorite record covers are, are really not 
technically good artwork at all. They just they just make the you know make the record make the record look like it's going to be a good record. You know what I mean? Like it's just so just some things do that, some and some things really don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some sometimes it's like the record cover almost like keeps you away from <laughs> from listening to it, and you're like, oh wait, this was good in spite of that. Yeah, there's 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 records that are that are. Um, that I actually think that actually the cover were like, mm. the uh, one of one example would be um, the Moving Targets, Burning in Water. Have you ever heard that record? No, no, I don't know that one. Oh, dude, this is a great record. It's okay. a great record. They're from Boston, and then I think it came out in like 1985 or something like that. Record, Bur- Burning in Water. I'm looking Target. at. Oh yeah, that sucks. <laughs> there's well there's two versions there's there's there, there was a there was a there's one that they had before it was, a, it was a photo they didn't get the rights for so they, they had to like take it off and then they like uh, pick the, the pretty much the most cheap the shittiest like snapshot of, of the guitar player and put it on the on the front and like kind of carved out yeah like like uh, punk rock like, uh lettering like they usually had a stat camera they had access to a stat camera and they got the you know and they just and just kind of cut it was, it was just the most to me now, now no, looking back on it, it's so lousy though that I actually think, wow, this is kind of awesome. Actually, <laughs> it's, like I mean, it's so really, bad, it starts becoming good again. It's just the, it's just like, it's just like, oh my god, no wonder no one fucking makes this record. Because, and <laughs> it's, it's, it's really good record. It's every song is like every song is good. It's like uh, I don't know. It's listen to it. It's really really good. But yeah, I mean, it, it, sometimes it can it can like you know tell a story or, and like kind of draw you in, like be mysterious and sort of like, oh wow, what's that sound like? Oh, let's check that out. And sometimes it's like, ugh. <laughs> like even like even like Marky Moon, right? Is is that a great album cover? I don't know. I think you know it's interesting. It's sort of like, oh, what's up with yeah, these guys? I think it's a great. I think it's a great. I think it's a great yeah. cover for sure. Absolutely. And the I font think. of just like the uh, you know the not no serifs like like above on the yeah, top, it's, it's like crazy. it's interesting. It's, I think this is exactly what they, they were trying to say. And also the music is also it's kind of the, whatever the, the push and pull between this really simple image yeah. and, and the per, really pretty lush and uh, complicated music or whatever. It's, it's kind of, a, kind of, it works good. I think a lot of times that that's a, a pretty easy trick to go for if you're doing like, you know, oh, you're my band, you're my band, they're really wild and crazy. So then you try to tone it down with the artwork. Or almost make you yeah, more minimal or something like. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's generate kind of tension between the two things. I mean, totally, like, yeah. Like and, and <laughs> but sometimes, but sometimes, sometimes it's a totally the wrong thing to do. Like I mean, you know, I don't like look at a funkadelic record or something like that. It's, it's like some guy with markers, <laughs> drawing like on drugs, drawing like just whatever he wanted to, and like it's and it, and, it, and it definitely helps the record sound good for some reason. Well, and there's there's a you know, and there's such a fine line. I mean, think of like fresh fruit for rotting vegetables, right? It's like it's like mm-hmm. with with the uh, almost uh, as an mm-hmm. old English, you know, like the, <laughs> that, mm-hmm. that font. And like in lesser hands, great cover, such a great cover. It sucks so bad in lesser hands, but like it works so well for that record. The fact that you know, and, all, and also and also it is the Dead Kennedys, and you yeah. know it's the Dead Kennedys. So right. it's like you kind of you kind of know it just it just works, it really works. I actually I like I like the other, I like. Oh, man, Winston Smith, that was the guy who did him. Um, Winston Smith, he, yeah. Yeah, he did a uh, In Gobby Trust, that one, right? Is that what it's called? Oh, yeah, with the the money, with the cross. The, 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 the yeah. Yeah. you know, like, super great. Um, and, and the and fucking um, Plastic Surgery Disasters is a really good cover. Um, Frankenchrist is a really good cover. Yep. Um, the last one, they tried for Democracy, I didn't think I had a good cover. I'm not, it's like kind of a drawing, it was, it was kind of too flippant. I think. Yeah, that's the one that's like it's like a cartoon, but it's um like it's it's like Statue yeah, of Liberty, not, with like I, I airplanes. Can't remember it. Yeah, stuff. It's stuff like that. Yeah, it's like eh, it's like eh, or whatever. The only thing I remember is the color scheme because it's like blue and red, if I remember correctly, on the on the, on the mm. logo. And the rest of it was like eh, whatever. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's. Uh, I mean, it's them, and they're amazing. But, yeah, I mean, the uh, music is good. Don't get me wrong, but just as 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 far as you know, judging and I, I, I got, I got to be honest with you, I don't think I've ever really sat and listened to Big Trump for democracy. Um, I really? my, my yeah now I think like I cut off my they kind of use that the first it's like <laughs> yeah, band. I mean. the first two records it's like every fucking band. but like um, yeah the first two records is, it's hard uh, to get excited about you know Rambozo and you can just you know kill the poor and 
<laughs> so it's, it's it's good. It's you know it's fine. It's, it's just a, it's just a little. The, the problem with the, that all this stuff is just it's a little too topical and it dates it in this weird yeah. way. That um, that's the problem with like you know you playing music or whatever. Like you write songs about stuff that's going on now, and if you get too specific about that, it's it's going to sound dated in ten years. It's going to sound like oh yeah, and it, and, it, and that makes it that means it's only going to be good again when it's nostalgia. So it's like you kind of want to not date yourself so much by being super specific about that. Well, and that's, again, going back to Yankram, I think it's one of the reasons why that's such a cool album cover, because it just, it kind of looks out of time. You know, like, I remember when I first saw it, the first thing I thought of is like, oh, it's kind of almost like Raymond Pettibone or something, but like, very minimal. Oh, yeah, like, way, almost like, I mean, it's like, way like that. And I, I mean, the thing is, here's the thing about Raymond Pettibone, I think, is like, okay, he uses brush and India ink. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's on the table for everyone. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't it's have like, a copyright on that. Exactly. There's, there's no, there's no. I mean, everyone can do, everyone can do this. This is like, this has been, people have been doing this for thousands of years. It's like, so I didn't feel bad that, yes, it does look like Raymond Pettibone. Yeah. I also didn't feel bad because I love Raymond Pettibone. Yeah, I mean, and Jesus. I'm happy to, and, and just, I, I, I forget, to, you know, you know, I'm alluding to him, or, and it's a tribute or a, an, inf, an inspiration. That's, that's, but it, but it is, but it is, yeah, it does look like that. But it's it's like in this from like the same school of not not like uh you know so to speak not literally uh, not like that it's like a rip off or anything along those lines at all. Mm-mm. It was just I had no other frame of reference other. Than no, it's not, I don't. It's not. It's, I don't think it's definitely, it's definitely a rip off. But it isn't. It's inspired by it very much for yeah. sure. And, and um, I don't know. That's just that's just that's just the way that, that thing came out. So what was what was what all was going on with Jehu at that time? Because I I got into you guys kind of too late. Like by the time I sort of found out i mean i lived in the central valley i didn't you know like there was central the valley internet. where's that but what uh of where of what, central valley of what? Where, uh, california where, right? so sacramento oh. stockton oh. modesto okay. fresno okay where where which one of these cities you live in i lived in modesto so i i i knew modesto. from modesto like wow. sonic youth i knew from fugazi <laughs> i know dude and, and, and no, like, no 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 it's just, it's just california california is really an amazing place because it's so so big and there's so many places there's so much like, of it yeah i've been through modesto but like i just I'm trying to what would it be like living in modesto it's it's kind of like iowa in a lot of ways or something <laughs> you yeah, know what i mean sure. like nebraska because sure. it's, it's, agri- it's it's all same as it's agriculture yep. and it's like yeah it's like living in small town america well and really especially is. pre-internet as we know it like you know we get to go up to the bay area to get you know, to go shop for records or cds actually let's be era specific you could go to like Davis or Chico or. Well, they, something like but that. they didn't have the ones we were looking for because the thing is, we were like, you know, we were super into oh, like Sonic right. back Youth. Be, back before you had to, you, right? Back before like, you could just everything was at your fingertips. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, if you yeah, wanted to go yeah. get a Butthole Surfers album, like you had to like go up to Oakland and San Francisco to go do it. You know, like they're not going to uh, have it at Tower Records or the Warehouse. Actually, if we're going to be air right. specific. Totally. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, but, but it's, the, a, it's yeah. Good. Oh, I was just gonna say. So, so by the time I got into uh, and I and I got Yankram first, I got that before I got self titled. I was like, oh fuck yeah, these guys are awesome. Oh yeah, they just broke up. Oh man, goddamn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and I and I That's I missed. I think I, I I think I missed you guys by like six months or so. Like, cause you you played with um, um, Great American Music Hall. I think was the last uh, the first one of Jay like Drive Like Jehu, if I remember correctly. I remember the, I remember playing there. Um, uh, I don't. It's like. A lot of it's a little blurry to me, so I don't really know. Some people are really good with this, and like uh, if you talk to like Mark or something like that, he would he would yeah. probably be able to tell you specific things. Also, Mark is a sober person, <laughs> but um, <laughs> right, that helps. That does help. Yes, like yeah, Ian has yeah. like a Ian McKay, like he can remember everything from happen like forty years ago and, and stuff. Like, I know. Jesus, dude. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. It's like, a, do I want to remember this much? Like, like, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I remember just being like, like, I just got into it too late. You know, I just didn't know. I was like, who's that? <laughs> like, I even lived in the Bay Area at the time, but I just didn't know, which is weird to I, think about. I missed, I missed lots of stuff too, dude. So, I mean, um, well, we shouldn't worry about the things we missed. We should worry about, the, or, you know, reflect on the things we did see that were really amazing and like, uh, yeah, I missed a lot of stuff. I didn't, I didn't, I, I got into punk kind of late. I, I got into punk when I was like, it's like seventeen, maybe. Okay. Um, and I was I was in metal before that, but like kind of like small, like 
LA, kind of like whatever, all just all kinds of metal. Um, and the first time I saw a punk band was when I saw Possessed, Dark Angel, Holy shit. Um, <laughs> Death, and Corrosion of Conformity. So Corrosion of Conformity played, and uh, I went to the show, and I'd gone to like lots of thrash metal shows and glam rock shows. I've been to you know all kinds of shit, but like. When Corrosion and Capote played, I was just like, these are my people. These these guys, these guys are just like, just like, no pretense, just like, let's do this. It's like, there's no, they seem, they seem like smart people. They seem cool. So I got into punk that way. I just finally got exposed when there was a kind of metal punk crossover. I got, I got exposed to the punk and I was like, that's, this is, this is definitely better than, than metal. Like, just, yeah, just the sort of mentality is just comfortable to me that's kind of got found your brand sort of moment <laughs> not my brand but my my people yeah yeah for a minute anyway i mean because because punk was was uh you know kind of kind of rotten and dangerous and there was no girls and it was uh and all well, the band sounded the same and it was it was it had a very it was a super hive mentality like hardcore especially like where we lived and like uh so I didn't last that long with like hardcore or you know, it just just seemed like not free. You yeah. Know? How'd you end up playing? How'd you, was it just like something that kind of happened naturally? Did you have a desire? Yes, I had a desire, but I also am lazy and, um, <laughs> and playing guitar means you have to learn how to play the guitar. Ideally. Yes. <laughs> which is, which is intimidating. Like that's the thing about metal. It's like there's way more fans than there are you know, musicians compared to punk, where everyone plays it. Yeah, because it's easy. Um, but I didn't get into playing punk until I heard uh, Sonic Youth, like in like. Yeah, man. And I was like, I could do that. And um, I bought. Yeah, I bought this great amp. I bought. I had. I had like a pre CBS Twin Reverb, that I bought for like two hundred bucks off this person, and I had a. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I bought this stuff for cheap. I had a job. I bought I bought uh, I bought a, uh, a pre CBS Jaguar. And I had, so those those were my because I'd seen pictures of them giving me like Jaguars and stuff. So and like uh, I didn't know to tune the guitar. I just started just making like Sonic Youthy noises, and that was really fun. My parents really didn't like it, but it was really fun. <laughs> Everyone's and, a critic. <laughs> and it's like and it's like Drive by Jehu. Like it was my first band I played guitar in. And and I gotta say, I'm not a very good guitar player. I'm still not. Yeah. And it's like, it's just like a. To me, a guitar is like kind of like you know, just like this, this thing. It, it, you know that you can do something with if you want. It's just like you just ah, it's just like a toaster. It has a. You know, it's like a, it's like anything. It's like it's a tool. It's a yeah. It's a tool. It's a, yeah. Exactly. But that's exactly. It's a tool. And uh, it's. Uh, but you get to play, I mean, the more you play it, the better you get at it. Um, and if you're playing all the time, you get pretty good playing it. Well, and it occurred to me, I'm, I'm like, I'm glad we talked, we were talking about album covers, we talked about television, because in a way, like, the way uh, Verlaine and Lloyd kind of played off each other um, in a very different way is kind of how I feel about um, you and John. You know, that like... On that record? Dude, yeah. You know what? You know, it, here's the thing about Trevor too. It's so much more about John than he's me. It's like it's like this two guitar thing. Yeah, I play guitar. I mean, but and there's some things that are like that I do that are important. Mm -hmm. But mostly it's about him. That's like that guy is that guy's what makes that man amazing. No, well, that's Mark too. Um, Mark is Mark is a really amazing drummer. He is um, very interesting. But style. like, I I don't think I add that much to that band guitar wise i mean it's like it's there but if, but if, if you took my guitar away it might be better <laughs> it's, it's like because like we I mean, I, it's, it reminds me of the first jay record because we were making the first jay record and john wanted, had all these like these dumb over that overdub ideas where he's like just, just stupid stuff like i'm gonna accent the e right here right because he didn't know anything about any of it yeah. but he but he had he had he was already really into it and like uh he just it just wasn't working he got sick of it and like 
And then he just like got so frustrated and just threw his hands up and went out into the lobby to go to sleep or whatever. And then me and Mark were like, okay, cool. And like take get rid of all of that. <laughs> so we just like, you know, tried to get rid of all of that. And like uh on the Jehu record, there's some there's some songs that are really uh, You're talking about the self titled one, the first one, right? No, the second one there's second, second one, second there's, one, one. Yeah, there's, one. There's, there's 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 a bunch of stuff that's like uh you know, just, just tracks, one one thing at a time. And there's some stuff that's like kind of not like Luau is like one of those ones that's just kind of like this pretty live and that's yeah. it's like uh that's kind of the best one because because you that john does that crazy oh man the, the, gu- guitar solo thing i, that's really, I, really I, I know the exact thing you're talking about like the second you said yeah. i know the exact part and i'm like i actually use that as a example of like musical uh you know feedback kind of noise kind of stuff recently and i was like yeah it's awesome it's pretty great john is john is a fucking great guitar player but you know, you know the you know the band you know the band that we're kind of like the band that everyone's like, oh, who, who who's drummer Jay like? <laughs> but this band we we like this band called Honor Roll from. Uh, oh yeah, this, no no, I'm a big Honor Roll from, fan. From from where that that's like that's like our biggest. I think that's the biggest. But well, on him for sure. I've been trying like, to get Penn to come on the show for forever, but he don't want to do it. Oh, keep trying, keep trying, dude. He's totally worth it. I mean, Penn is like. Pen is like the most dude. He's a flip. That guy's dude. unreal. That guy's a. But he's also yeah. He's just like he's like this genius. Yeah, yeah. He's just he just he just. I don't, he's like oh, I don't play guitar anymore. I don't feel like it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> like, okay. It's like right. oh, so it's like an Eddie Van Halen. Ben Halen's like oh, I don't feel like it. Eh, not feeling it right now. I mean, I mean, he's not Eddie Van Halen. I mean, no one is. But 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 it's he's he's awesome. But he's a guitar innovator, and it's something where it's like. Uh-huh. Yeah, like it still sounds kind of like out of time, <laughs> you know. So it's like, but he's got, he's it's got. It's just, it's just killer. It's just, it's just yeah. slaughters. It's like, it's, you know how you, you know, you know, you you listen to things when you were like whatever twenty something or whatever, and like you listen to stuff like that, like you listen to stuff like that now that I'm well, for me, like now some of it doesn't hold up at all, but that 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 holds up. It's just like, like the like the singles I did. Oof. God, I still put them on. They give me goosebumps. They're still so good. I'd love to get into it with him. Hopefully, hopefully I'll break him down Mm -hmm. and get him him on eventually. Oh, he'll break you down. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He's a smart dude. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, So, yeah, but back back over to your stuff. So, so Yank Crime, basically, kind of more like uh, the track live situation. The what? The, you, you kind of you said you more tracked that one live rather than doing a, like uh, like one by one. Right? Yeah, I did a couple songs live, and we did the rest of it normal. I think like I think like that song "Sinews" we did live, yeah. pretty pretty much live, and that and uh, "Luau," especially the, the guitar solo could only be live. And that yeah. can't even like it was, it was just like a let's see what happens kind of thing. But it's just a, it's a it's a great moment of noise I think in rock and roll history. Hey, totally. Had had you been playing that like? before like live a lot those songs or yeah and uh, and then we're and like if you like fish out some old shows or whatever you you, you could find versions of those songs that are very different like they have different lyrics or something maybe and like uh um but once you record something then that's the definitive version then you play that for yeah. more or less there's one exception and like i don't know who's listening to this and it gives a shit about any of this but like there's what there's more one people than you that, might imagine. Let's put it that okay. way. Okay, that, that the song, this, the first song is "Here Come Our Own Plows." That that song, we half that song when we played it live because it was like it was too long. It was like this song does not need to be five minutes <laughs> as long. long as it is on the record. <laughs> yeah, that that was actually my my main issue with this band is like it's like why is this song ten minutes long? <laughs> it's like <laughs> that's it, that's that's a long time. But the thing is, as a listener, I'd be like. I don't. I don't think as a listener. I don't know. It's 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 impossible for me to judge my own. It's like I'm too corrupt in the process. I'm, I'm, I'm no, you know, no outside perspective. But like playing those songs is pretty fun. Just to sit there and like go. Arr, arr. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty, yeah. No, what, it, but you're asking a lot. I mean, you're asking people. You're asking people to sit there and listen. You go. Arr, arr. And for some reason, at that time, people wanted to hear. Arr. <laughs> well, not, so, I mean, not just that time, but later, out. you know, because like I said, I never got to see you the first time. So, like, I went down to the first um, when did you, you did the thing me? in the organ uh, uh, in the park. You went to that? Yeah, yeah, I went to that. 
don't know oh, if we ever talked dude. about that, but I, I, I like totally. I'll talk about that. Uh, when we, when we um, <coughs> yeah, when that was announced, I was like, I was like, hell yeah, we're gonna go. Because I didn't know if you, you know, is this ever gonna happen again? I don't know. I want to see you guys play. Uh, and it was great because I basically was, you know, sit, I've told this story on this show so many goddamn times, but this is the first time I'm telling it to somebody actually in the band of just the excitement of, of being like in this Oregon uh, like band show in the park and wow. being with, you know, whatever, 4,000 people that just are all kind of like, what the hell's going to happen? <laughs> like, it was so cool. It was such a neat feeling. Then when you guys came Did in, you hear the like, Oregon? Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, that was great. The, 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 I- I couldn't hear it. I'm glad I couldn't hear it. It, um, it depended on head. where you were at, though. It depended on where, it, like, I moved while you guys were playing, and then I couldn't hear it at all. So it was like, kind of depend on where you were at. Yeah, that was that was that was a crazy thing. It was it was um, it was really neat. I, I thought it was a really neat. That's a that's a that's a wonderful little jewel in my life. And that's the only time my my parents ever ever, ever came to see my band. Oh no, kidding! That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. and because uh, they were like, what are you? wasting my time doing this shit and i was like i was like oh there's four thousand people here huh look at that <laughs> yeah i was gonna say that's a great show for them to come out to <laughs> <laughs> like so it was good. so i kind of felt you know i kind of felt some you know vindication about my whatever my path in life um and, and uh, even my father was impressed and i i don't think that he enjoyed the music uh, <laughs> right because but... because because let's face it most people don't enjoy the music that we play most people, some people, there's a very small amount of people who do. So, but that was um, a great moment because you had all these people like myself coming from all over. You know that at that time I was just coming from Oakland. Yeah, but, you know, coming so from all over cool. to be there. It was and, so cool. I felt like I was in the dead or something. It was, it was like, it was really cool. Um, apparently, that was the most people who had been in that in that space since like the World's Fair there. So, <laughs> wow. So that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool thing. That's super awesome. Yeah, and and and. Um, you know, it was it was just great that like, you know, <laughs> like after the show, everyone was like hanging out because they all had this like cool communal experience. They even had like you know that, uh, you know, you may not even necessarily know someone, but like we were at a bar afterwards and just kind of yeah. struck up a conversation with some people. Like, hey, wasn't that awesome? Like, yeah, it was great. It was like, oh yeah, could you hear the organ? Uh, kind of, you know, like everyone was. <laughs> Good, kind of. That's what I wanted, kind of. That's what I was secretly hoping for was that it would be kind of, because it was like. Just, just blasting organ would would have been would have just would have just would have, it seems to me like it would totally wreck the whole thing. It would like it's like um, what did we play? Five songs. You played long songs. Yeah, you so, played uh, um, if it kills you. You played uh, luau. Um, I'm trying to remember what I mean, this is. A long do time you compute? Ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I, it, yeah. I played, we put all those. We put kind of like the longer, more epic ones, so the organ could be in there. But that worked yeah. because it was, uh, it lent itself to that venue, right? Of <laughs> like that venue of like being yeah, like, you know, no, 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 air. no, exactly, exactly. It was, it was very clear that we had to play songs in that space and that, and that had dynamics in them because if you just started bashing away at something like a bullet turning to Vegas or something like that, it would, yeah. it would, uh, it would just, it would just sound like a mess. And, it, it wouldn't and, sound good to the people. Take, in the take advantage of this, the space you have. Like, yeah, this. right. Exactly. 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 Yeah, we were, tra- we were trying to make it a thing. It was like. It was like uh, our friend Gang, who was on the the board of the pavilion and uh, the organ pavilion in San Diego, was like, uh, "Hey, I have this idea. You how, have you have Driver Jay get back together and and play with the organ." And we there've been lots of offers for us to do or things, and we're like, "That sounds pretty cool. That'd be cool. Let's yeah, do that's, that." Hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> so we did that, and then and then after that, we're like. We can make some money if we just <laughs> right, right, yeah, totally. Because there's clearly <laughs> I mean, like, an audience. We just, for it, so right? just, I mean, we just, we just like, yeah, we could, we could, we could go play and like people, people like this and we'd have fun and and like, I mean, we played like Coachella and stuff to like no one. <laughs> Super funny, but um, we got paid a lot of money. <laughs> right, like, right. It was awesome, and and uh, and it was awesome when we got to play like little things and stuff and and when we get back to them. Uh, the spirit of the whole thing, which I don't think people uh, kind of had to be around for it. It was like it wasn't the same every night. It was it was a different because you could mess with Jerry Jerry. You could mess with. There's not a lot of consonants or something like that. I mean, it's like it's it's the same song every time. Yeah. Um, so it was it was pretty neat. 
Well, and that was real special just because that was like a big communal experience to the organ. Like I do think that the other two times I saw you at the independent and at the, um, the Ritz, like the Ritz. you, you probably Ritz? played better at that one and you played longer for sure. Like you, cause you had been like kind of being a band again. Longer, the Ritz, where's right? the, what's the Ritz? Uh, that was San Jose. That was the one, uh, Oh, that was the one you talked me into coming to. <laughs> Shit. No, I like that place. I like that place. I forgot the name. I, it's like, uh, I, I know those guys and they uh, they rule. Um, Corey. Well, and, um, then, and then somebody, uh, yeah, and somebody kept being, you know, turn the vocals up, turn the vocals up. And John did that. Well, see, what you need to do is you need to stand so the speakers hit this way. You're up here. And like, he did this whole thing. It was real funny. And I, I, was, I was there with um, a friend oh, who like runs live sound and he was pretty psyched on the, uh, on that specific stage banter because they were like people that were like, Hey, turn, you know, turn the vocals up. But like, they were like, <laughs> the speakers were, uh, behind them. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if John is like the best guitar player who's ever lived or anything like that. I think he's a really good guitar player. I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't know. If, I don't know where he, he fits in the whole pantheon of, of guitar players and, and stuff like that. But I know where he fits in the pantheon of guys who talk a lot of shit on stage. And that is like, at the <laughs> fucking head. He, he is, he is like the absolute best at it. I, I, I've, I've seen so many shows, so many shows where he just, I, I, I can't believe he, he, he the, the, the things he says. And, um, for example, like, a. Uh, Oh, bits of Night March we're playing in Boston, so... Um, oh, yeah, yeah, we did that tour together, sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did a tour together, and we flip, we, we, we flip the coins, or, or we'd, uh, the, we'd, we'd, we'd swap headlines, so they'd play last, and we'd play last, whatever, we just flip flopped. And uh, on this particular night, it was, it, was, they were, it was their turn in Boston, and we played in this place that was owned by, I guess, people from, like, the Dropkick Murphys or something like that, and they had this giant, like giant 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 tv screens all playing like boston sports it was in the winter so it was like mm, hockey and then like just whatever and it was like really snowy and everyone's kind of bummed it was like not the best situation and we played and like it was whatever and like i was saying to john backstage like so do you ever you know when you come here do you ever like you know go off in boston he's like no never I was like, really? Because, you know, I've seen, I've seen this stuff a lot of times, and you usually go off and whoever it is. I'm like, oh. Last time I was up here, I played in, a, played in a, the Sultans, and I was free singing. And I would hold the mic, and I'd, I'd kind of stick my pinky out. And, like, uh, it was just my style, you know? I'd kind of hold, hold, hold the mic with three fingers in my thumb, and, like, stick my pinky out. And just free singing. And after the show, this guy comes to me, he's like, he's like, hey, what, you know, it was a black hint of the Boston accent, but it's like, he's like, so, you know, uh, pff, you guys are pretty good, but what's up with this all, this pinky thing? And John, like, was, like, looking up at this guy, like, two heads taller, and I was like, that's because I'm gay. <laughs> and I'm like, all the gay people. Like, <laughs> and our friend Jimmy, who's <laughs> a super Southie guy, just, like, grabbed him, was like, whoa! <laughs> and just drags him up. <laughs> just, like, um, and then, uh, anyway, anyway that's, that's, the, that's the story. And anyway, so I was like, oh, that's freaking hilarious. And then, and then we play, and like they play, and he just proceeds to go off on Boston so hard. <laughs> and I wish I could remember the stuff he said, because I mean, you have to get him on your on your thing, because he's because he's just like he's like one of the funniest. Rick, people. you know what's funny is is the the tour you guys this tour you guys did together at the SF show. I talked to him well, about it, and he agreed to be. He's like, yeah, let's do it. Like he agreed to it then. Like how long ago was that, right? But then like I don't know. Just, you know, whatever. We trade emails I'll, I'll, now I'll, I'll, again. I'll, 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 I don't know. I'll tell him. I'll tell him I did it, and I don't. That, that, that yeah, make him feel better about it. But I just think it's funny because like that that show was probably like a week after, or week or two after you this happened, right? <laughs> but mm. <laughs> that was a great tour though because that was you know, obits. Or, yeah, it was fun. It was totally. Cool. It was a cool show. I, I like the Night Market a lot actually, and um, and it's it's great to have John and Gar playing guitar together. It's really cool. Yeah, and I thought it was a good. They're both really good guitar players. And, and even without you know, the, uh, the the sort of the family the family tree or anything, like I thought the bands complimented each other. Like I've had Sorab on a few times too. Um, oh, I, I don't really. Yeah, oh, shit, I, I, I listened to that. 
Uh, and uh, and well, I just uh, thought it was a good, like, it was even, like, without the Hot Snakes thing, it was like, oh, this is a good double bill of, like, good rock and roll bands, you know? I, I thought that was yeah, like, we, figured, we, figured, we figured it would be fun, and it was like, we all knew each other, and we all liked each other, and it was, uh, it was a good time. It was really fun. So, uh, tell me a little bit about, uh, like, post j Who. Right, you. Um... Well, well, that's 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 like post Who for me is like three or four years of not being in a band, and then I moved to New York, and then I got an Austin. Right. You, uh, I think you, 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 I think you did something on that one last the one you did a seven inch, right? Or no, it's the first record. I'm trying to remember. I'm not on that record. I'm not. I'm not in that band. I what? The, you are the, the, guess. I, I I played a tour from from. This band last time I used the guitar player uh, Brian is uh, right. the guitar player from Red Fang. Right, right, right. And he, he actually um, he told this story on on air. Um, okay, but it was like a so million I, years. I ago. just I, I just toured it. I just toured my way out. I, I played I played on like uh, I don't know three or four songs of theirs. And I just I just this is my way of getting my amplifier <laughs> to uh, to New York because I I could I could send everything else that I that I cared about but like my amplifier had to be. Uh, trucked out there somehow and I just, I just like went with that and um I love that band too they're, and they're, they're really so good cool I, I, I yeah, they're absolutely great. adored really cool people yeah they're great then you end up in New really York and you, and you do design stuff in New York for for some some amount of years right I mean I've been here for 23 years yeah well oh, yeah Jesus so, time flies huh it's a long time yes it does <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> I know. God. <laughs> Horrible. And, and uh, so then you aren't really playing. And then uh, what? So John, like years later, like John like hits you up. Hey, I got this. I got this thing. Like. Yep. That's exactly what happened. I was I was hanging out when they played a rocket show here. And John says, you got to hear, hear this Hot Snakes thing. Or not Hot Snakes. I don't, I don't, I don't think it was a name. had a name. But he, uh, he played it for me. And it was like, it's the first record, essentially. Right. Um, and a bunch of stuff. There's like, there's way more songs with like uh, the, the ones that didn't play the record or whatever. Anyway, so he, he uh, played for me. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. You want to sing it? I was like, sure. So, what was that? So, that's how Hot Snakes kind of started. Um, got Gar to play bass when we played live. And it's basically, that, that first record is just John and Jason. And yeah. they, it's just them playing. And then you and, have, I mean, and there, there wasn't yeah. really uh, any mindset towards like, oh, hey, we're going to do this live and stuff uh, immediately because I, 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 I heard we you. We all liked it. We all liked it. We all thought it was cool. Right. We all, we all, it was cool. Right. But I think of that, that first song on that first record, which is killer. It's like one of my favorite intro tracks of like, you know, any records. It's freaking awesome. But there's like no breath for you to take. <laughs> <laughs> during any of it, like vocal wise, like it's kind of like. Dude, I'm like on. a surfer now. I'm not. I, I'm, I, I like. I know how to hold my breath, right? Right. It's like it's like because like when we when we, when we first started doing that band, I had to go out and. Like, yeah, yeah. Go, that's that's the, the first time like, I saw you. You totally like you went for, it and I could tell you're like, oh fuck, I'm getting winded. <laughs> yeah, dude. And after after the show, I want I want to puke. Yeah. And like and, and it, it's just like it wasn't fun, and I I just learned how to relax. It's like, it's like. Like if you see Hotsick now, it's like you'll see Johnny all jump around, yeah, doing Elvis moves and shit like that, and I'm, I'll just stand there because like <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're like because, um, because it's like I, I'm trying to conserve energy, yeah, to get that crappy sound out of my out of my body. So you have to like really not arrest. So you, you go, you use the energy, and then you rest. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's yeah. that way. It's that way you just. Because like before, I used to just, you, just, you would just be totally tense. Like you see hardcore bands, like it's like I'm just gonna scream and you're like, 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 yeah, and then like they, oh, I'm just, uh, I have to work out in order to do this. No, you don't. You, you, you just, you, it's all you just you just need to fucking take a breather when you're not like, when you're not screaming. You know, it's like it's like it's not. It's it's just a uh, I don't I'm not, why am I talking like this? No, no, because it's in, it's interesting because it is. It's it's a. Uh... It's punk rock and music for like adults is how I would kind of characterize it, right? But you, you, well, there's no such thing as punk rock music for adults. <laughs> I mean, we're we're living this Peter Pan existence in some ways, like where we're like, 
Yeah, I love Stalag thirteen. I, you know, it's like it's like <laughs> it's like it's like it's like, dude, you're fucking fifty. You like Stalag thirteen? <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> really? No, I just got this RKL record on. It's like it's like it's 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 uh it's just it's just funny. It's but it's but it but that's the deal. I mean, and I I'm guilty of this too because I I still I'm still frozen and in time in some ways. I just I just love rock and roll music and all that stuff and I just think it's the greatest thing. And it, and it and it's and it is really silly. And I like I feel really silly as an as a you know, pretty old guy at this point. Like I'm still interested in this. It's like so it's so weird to me. Well, sure. And 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 to be clear, I was trying to pay a compliment as far as that goes because I it, it is something where it's you can say they have been in here and I don't worry about it. Yeah, I, I mean, I've talked to other folks about like how, you know, the punk rock as a, you know, as a culture, as a music form or whatever, you know, there's no precedent for like what happens when like you get older. Okay, well, do you like, do you like, you know, the Nick Cave thing? Okay, well, that's one path, right? You know, and then you have like, <laughs> you know, are you... Well, that st- guy's an outlier. He's a, he's, he's a really... He's an outlier. I think yes. He's a multi-talented guy. He, he do, like, I, I'm not, I gotta be honest with you, I'm not the biggest fan of his... Uh, Nick Cave records output. I, um, I, I'm I'm be honest but, with you. I'm I feel the same way. Like there's a few but, records I, I love. I did but, see him once yeah. live, and it was like actually like 20 years ago when I first moved here, and it was fucking amazing. Yeah, he, like, he's like one of the all-time he, great he, he, for he sure. Like yeah, oh my god, he just he, all the songs that on record just sound like yeah, it just sounds like in the studio, dude. Whatever. But like when you see it live, it's like wow, it rips. Oof. Yeah, it's it's. He, he just, he's an incredible performer. He's a really amazing, really amazing. And also he's like, I saw that movie he did, and it was like, pretty good. And I was like, he's got, the guy, the, 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 t- the 10,000 light years on Earth, or whatever it's called. Uh, uh, I, the one I saw was a Western one. It was like a, Oh, The Proposition. Yeah. That yeah, was, yeah, that was that good. Was, I like that. That was, it was good. It wasn't, I mean, it wasn't like the best movie I saw in my life or anything, but it was like, that was a good, it was a real Western, man. It was really good. Yeah, yeah, like, it, it was, it was... I didn't feel ripped off after I watched it, or that it was some like you know certificate of participation movie. It was a, it was a solid movie. The yeah. guy the guy the guy did a good job. I mean, he wrote it. I don't I don't know if I don't know. I mean, obviously, there's lots involved with movies. But so so this is. Did you ever hear? Uh, this is the first time I I think I would have talked about this, but like he wrote a sequel to Gladiator. Did you hear about this? Oh, wow, that would be amazing. It's crazy. I'd I thought I would totally watch that. That would be. That'd be Nick Cave's Gladiator, oof. And, and Gladiator, it's like time travel. Gladiator 2 by Nick Cave. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it's, this would be this next record. It's totally Gladiator 2. Wild. It's totally crazy. Like, I've never, I've never read the screenplay, but he wrote, like, a whole screenplay for it. And, like, Jesus features into it. And, like, yeah, there's time travel. It's fucking nuts, apparently. It's, like, totally crazy. But Dude, it sounds, it sounds totally worth checking out. What about the new Danner thing we're going to do? Have you seen the previous for that? It was, like, a vampire movie? He's in it. Uh, which one? The uh, he's got a he's got a movie. He's got a, like a feature movie. It's like a vampire. It looks a lot like no uh, kidding. It looks a lot like that te- uh, like sort of Robert Rodriguez. Uh, oh, like from Dust Till Dawn, kind of. Yeah, okay. looks a lot. It's it, it seems like, but Danzig is one of the vampires, which is thank huh. God. Like. All right. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I can dig that. And uh, I think Robert Trujillo is in it, and like uh, sort of really the world's scariest Mexican actor, you know, like yeah, the guy, that guy's he's, rad. Like, he's in everything. Yeah, he's amazing. Um, that is, no, that Robert Trujillo is the best lead player from Metallica. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. You think of Danny Trejo. You think of Danny Trejo. <laughs> the second scariest Mexican. Yeah, that's the guy from Suicidal <laughs> Tendencies. You're right. Yeah, yeah, totally. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And I'm all like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's great. <laughs> Dude, that guy's amazing. I mean, like you watch you watch that guy play and you have that like, whole that whole crawl thing. That guy's that guy's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy's. You ever hear that the 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 Lou Reed? Um, oh, uh, uh, Lulu. Yeah, man. Yeah, uh, there's, well, there's some live stuff and they're trying to put like sweet chain stuff. Metallica's trying to get sweet chain. <laughs> And Lars can't swing anything. No, no, so he's like the like, least swingy like, drummer ever. Yeah. He's like the least swingy drummer who's ever lived. Yeah, he's just like flogging it along. I think Lee Reed is just like, wow, this this really sounds because he's like, oh, this really sounds different. <laughs> 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 it's, 
you were funny to me. I'm sorry. Well, and that record's Sweet hilarious James. too. I, mean, Dude, man, I wish I, I only wish if if James Hetfield sang it would be that much better though. Sweet James, yeah. <laughs> Imagine how amazing that would be. Oh. Sorry. Well, and then like the in the originals that they did in that record, there's like I am the table. Like you know, there's like some like mm. whoa, what is <laughs> somebody like. Nobody was around to say no for any of this? Okay. Oh, dude. I love Metallica. I love it. They're, uh, yeah. they, follow, they follow their own North Star, man. Like, good, good, good for them. <laughs> good for them. They did. I mean, like, that band is a huge band. And, like, and, like, and, like when they never got played on the radio or anything like that. I mean, like, they just, they succeeded through pure merit and elbow yeah. grease. They, like, they really, they really, they had something people wanted. I mean, like, Fast, hard, nasty American pimply metal. I mean, they, they they do it great. I mean, I think they. I mean, I'm not. It's not something I put on and like like a home or anything like that. But like, at one point in my life, they were my favorite band. I, mean, I, I loved them. When a Ride the Lightning came out, I bought it. But I was there fucking at like nine o'clock in the morning when Licorice Pizza opened up to buy that record. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it still slams too, you know. And it's one of those things where, you know, good for them for figuring it out and making a career of it. You know, that's. And and here's it. Here's so here's my take on it. Like, okay, yeah. Oh, the new Metallica record. You know, it's it's, it's here. It's here. Cool. I kind I kind of felt like, I kind of oh, felt I like they were like is Sonic. There, is, there, is there a new Metallica record? No, I was just I kind of felt like how Sonic uh, Youth was for a while for me, where I'm like, yeah, I have enough Sonic Youth in my life good on you guys you know but like it's, that's fine i don't need to check this one out you know it's okay. do you think sonic youth sonic youth are like my, one of my favorite they're one of my favorite, favorite bands but like they have some records where i'm like ah, okay what's this okay like right. well actually most of them <laughs> but like but like it doesn't matter because like the ones that they did are so good yeah are like so like so transcendently good that it's like they could just keep cranking out crap forever and like it, it's like it's like doesn't matter yeah doesn't matter i mean that's just dude when I, I saw Sonic Youth on the Evil tour, and it was like, oh fuck yeah, that's one of my favorite records. That's so good. And like, I, I, I think it was like maybe my last day of school. I'm like, like yeah, I'm going to see Sonic Youth. And I, it's a weird kind of choice because Black Flag were also playing much closer to my house. <laughs> oh my god! But it was Black Flag. The Black Flag of that period was like kind of like, yeah. Oh, so that was like a uh, um, loose nut kind of era, or. Even later than that, uh, it was like it was the only two people. The only two people left were like, like, like even Kira was the gone. only the only the only <laughs> the only original member left was was Greg Gear. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean Henry was in it, obviously, but like it was like eh, because Sonic Youth was like the most exciting. Yeah. So thing. so it's so like, so Sonic Youth is at like the peak him. of their power, and then like Black Flag is like uh, who's got the not, that, not the peak, so. not the peak, but like rising. Like, right. Like, right. Right. That record is not their best record. It's like, but it's it's like, it's like when you saw that, saw that live. It was, man, it was, good. it was so. Good. And they, I saw them at this place, North Park Lions Club, which is a really small place, and um, and they actually hated their set. They were like, they they, they didn't even do an encore. Oh. They were just, yeah, they thought, they thought they were terrible, and they were, they were just to me, they were just like the best thing I've ever seen in my life. They put with Sacker and Trust too, which was cool. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, 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 and I'm super into it. Except for Sacred Trust playing like yeah, that that point was kind of whatever. Because that record's surviving it always. That Sacred Trust record is, is like is like one of my favorite SST records ever. It's like <laughs> I just remembered I was I was such a huge Black Flag fan. I uh, I ordered a Gone record, record at one point. Your, and oh, I, I was oh my god! I was it's so like, bummed out. <laughs> It's torture. It's terrible. I was like, I was like, this can't. Did I get the wrong record? This can't be it. <laughs> you know, people. You know, people. People shit on that guy, Greg Gaiman, and, and like, I want to like be the first to say, fuck the people who shit on that guy. That, that guy's guy, a, that guy's that a guitar guy. genius. Like, <laughs> well, he, and he just he just isn't content to like just do the same thing over and over again. Yeah, he wants to him. do something different. Yeah, yeah, good for him. It's it's his life. It's his, his exploration, his journey, and it's cool and whatever. But I mean, like. Most of it, I think, isn't something I want to listen to. But <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. But but it's uh, but but like the way the, the guitar playing on Black Flag, you like on my favorite record, I think, is Slip It In. Slip It In's all, underrated. I feel 
Yeah. Oh, all right, Jonah. The, the first, the first two songs. I could slip it in and. Uh, oh, the black coffee. I'm not, I'm not sure what the songs are, but like, uh, just, just the guitar solo. It's like, like the. That's the one's got. It says uh, black coffee's in there. Uh, is it a? Uh, is it black coffee? Maybe it is black coffee. Black coffee stuff. Stare at the walls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. Um, <laughs> uh, shit. Let me look at the Look at it. So, uh, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> this, this could be a very compelling listen for folks. <laughs> oh, I just look back. Uh, Battalion of Saints, I'm right there, too. I'm going to talk about them. Battalion of Saints, wow, yeah, I haven't heard of that in a while. You're putting me through my paces with the old punk rock stuff. It's awesome. You know, I have a, I have a kind of a lousy record collection this year. I, I sold a lot of that for burritos, and I. Yeah. Okay. Slip it in. There. Okay, is flip it in. Black coffee. Yeah, those are the two. Those are the two songs I like. Wound, wound up and rat's eyes. Right? Wound that's, up and rat's eyes. Are really yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The second song, second side. I don't think that you're not evil is a stupid song. Uh, it starts off with that instrumental. Good. That's where they started off with that mm-hmm. instrumental stuff. The bars is a good song. Yeah. Obliteration. Yeah, that's. I'm trying to remember obliteration. I think it's pretty good though. Um, yeah, that's that's a great great cover. Talk about iconic, wow! And that's a great cover. The only Black Flag records I'm looking at what I own right now, and I only have I have I have like a couple singles. I have I have My War. I have my favorite one, which is fucking everything in black. Oh yeah, that that one that one kills. <laughs> that one's great. And I have like my favorite Black Flag song is on. I have I just cracks in the sidewalk uh, compilation has a minute in on it and has some other bullshit that's like on the side. It's like it's like super like spot messing around kind of thing. But it's uh, <laughs> but, the, 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 but the but the Black Flag song is uh, clocked in with Des singing, who I think is I think maybe my favorite Black Flag. Song. I, I I agree, but what's funny to Just me is for pure like, sound. It's like wow. It's if so you, cool. if you like see like the Target video or whatever of, of like a of like with with Des singing, it's like you can totally tell like, he's singing wrong. He's like blowing out his voice the whole freaking time, right? And it no, sounds I, don't, so I don't think I don't think like live he'd be the best singer. I, yeah, I, I don't I don't. But think the that, records, think, he's yeah, definitely yeah, the best yeah, front man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Henry. That's Henry. But yeah, like, but like, sure. um, but he does have the. A rad voice, and he does. He's a better. I think he's a better singer than Henry is. Probably, yeah, yeah. But but Henry's yeah, but like the worst singer to me is Chavo. I think he's. I think he's. I think he's the worst. Singer, the worst singer, or, or not. Or I think he's number four. <laughs> Keith Morris is really amazing. Keith Morris is amazing, but he, like they were almost a different band then. You know, like in a good way. Yeah. Like I love that shit. Yeah, but. no, I love that stuff. Like that song I've had it yeah I'm going to I'm going to yeah 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 yeah. totally (laughs) but it is it is kind of when you when you when you listen to it it is kind of like kind of snotty British British British-y it's like it's like it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of John Arnold Johnny Rotten you know the way he sings I'm going to explode it's like it's not like a it's not it's 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 British-y sounding the way he sings Super it's like snotty, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's it's like Hermosa Beach, British. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. That's totally English. It's like that's that, that's a uh, very strange, but he's great. He 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 came on the show. He um, it's hard to get a word in edgewise with that guy, but he's great. I love him. <laughs> like he's 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 fantastic. He's he's I I he's like he's like the Gandalf of uh, punk rock or something like that. Yeah, man. He's he's a he's a pretty pretty amazing guy um well I so i was going with all that like a million years ago i was just going to say is that like i kind of felt like with hot snakes it was it, like the way i described it to my friend was it was like oh yeah it's like the jay who guys but they're doing like a band that's kind of like in the same lines of like wipers and crime and he's like oh fuck yeah let's go and see him great you know this is early on i'm talking about uh-huh. and you know i meant and again painting the picture because i think like a lot of people think about Hot Snakes after, like, the, the second round of Hot Snakes, right? And that was kind of a weird time for aggressive music. Like, everything was, like, new metal. You know what I mean? Like, Lou uh, Biscuit and all that shit. You mean, like, short, when we, we, like, did, like, we came back? Talking, we I, I was talking about when you first came, like, came again. So, like, first, first go-around, like, it was sort of, like, like, there wasn't a lot... 
of I aggressive feel, guitar music. Yeah, yeah, there. exactly. That, that, there wasn't a lot mm. of music like that at that time. And it, no, was, it was there. You just, you just, it was there. It was totally there because we played lots of shows and we generally played with aggressive guitar music bands. They were, they were, they were out there. They were, they were, they were totally out there. Well, they were. You know what? You're right, and and that's a that's a poor statement on, on my part. But I, I, it's sort of like they were there, but it wasn't like in the zeitgeist. I guess I should say, and like it was something where. Like that re- that first record, like it rips so hard and it's just so relentless too, and that's kind of one of the things I like about it. I mean, it's, not, it's way know. more it's way more punky than, yeah. than like Drive It. Drive It is way more arty or even metally or jammy even. I don't know than than uh, Hot Snakes. Hot Snakes is really direct. Hot Snakes is pretty immediate, and like the songs aren't like you know nine twelve minutes long. As much I love those nine twelve minute long songs. <laughs> You know, it's you can fit a lot more of them in when if, it's. You know what? If you can pull off, if you can pull one off, it's you know, Hawkman can pull one off, or Thirteenth Oil Elevators can pull one off. But like, but like a bunch of kids who don't really know how to play that good. It's it. We kind of lucked out because, like, I think I think that like that song like like Lou Hour or something like that. Yeah, that, that's, that's still pretty cool. But it's like, but it's it's like pretty hard to get away with that kind of. Length of just to me, I just don't want to hear that. I want to hear. I want to hear a, a good song. But I mean, even like you know, I mean, Bullet Train to Vegas. That song rips. You know, like that, and that's. Well, a, it's a, it's a, that's that's like that's like the most hardcorey hardcore song we have in the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It wasn't like, but I'm just saying, you weren't all doing like ponderous Hawkwind <laughs> jams or anything like along those lines. And no, also, we, well, we never did. We never did. We we we, we weren't. But we, we didn't have the same sign of the wind. Um, we, we did, we, yeah, we didn't have the same mentality. Talk, I mean, like Hawkwind. I don't, I don't think I even, I definitely didn't know who Hawkwind was when the driver day was active, so we couldn't have been fighting them. But, like, it was just, I don't know. We, we felt like we were, like, kind of just seeing we could do i don't know just, we weren't we, we, did, we didn't have a plan well and i think that's something that, that made the sound kind of unique too because you can't we we're coming out with punk rock intensity but you're you know kind of dicking around with stuff here and there and like there there are elements that are almost proggy but i don't mean that as an insult if that makes sense oh for sure well <laughs> you, know, just, you know what just, i mean just, 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 just the length of the song alone is like yeah. <clears throat> is like okay yeah, so it's, 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 like I said, it's asking a lot. It's like, uh, you know, right? as long as over three minutes, you're just starting to ask more and more. Of, it's it's, it's, it's got to like be, it's got to hold your attention <laughs> if you're going to right. play a song for, for so, ten minutes long. So was the first one like along those lines? Uh, if it kills you, off the first record, was where it kind of because that's a kind of a longer one. Well, that first record is so. What the hell are we doing? We don't even know. Here's some crap we came up with, and we're not playing a record. <laughs> That's I think by the second record we had a slightly better idea. It's too bad the band didn't like stick around longer because it probably, it probably would have been probably would have done something completely different later. I don't I don't know. It, it's uh, it's hard to say. It's a volatile group of people. Um, I don't know. I, I, I didn't answer your question. What do you, what do you mean, ask me? Well, yeah, because I mean, because it, it does kind of feel like a band cut down in its prime, almost to a certain from from an outside perspective, right? It's like, wow, what? God damn! Like that record smokes, but like, what would have happened after that? Oh, I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, just it's it just personality things in the in the band, and and um, it's just like uh, that's just kind of what happens a lot. Just where bands break up, they just they don't see eye to eye or whatever, or they politics form in the band, and it's it's bands are weird. It's like a marriage, but like four people are born. <laughs> right, that's so true, man. It's so true. It's really strange. It's a really strange, uh, strange thing. Uh, a comment uh, from the chat box. In 1996, review of the first J Who record at KSPC, great station. Said, it's 1986 is, is way too early. It would have to be 96, 96. 96, okay. Uh, the review says, I'm tired of bands that only sing about how mean and ugly they are, is the review apparently. So that's 
Wow, you know, that's interesting. Because Jehu got, like, one bad review. That's the second bad review I've ever heard of, of Jehu, <laughs> of any Jehu thing. Jehu was, like, was like critical favorite. Everyone liked this. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, was no, there was no bad reviews. And, like, uh, that's a pretty... I can, dude, that's legit, man. I, you, listen, this shit is, like, it's, like, fuck this, I'm not going to this. I, I totally get it. <laughs> I don't think they're even totally saying they don't want to listen to it. I think they're just saying they're. No, it's like, no, it's, like, it's, like, it's, like, it's like it's just not for everyone. It's <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, it's yeah, really exactly. it's really it really targets a, a people with a certain a certain time and a certain mentality. It's like it's not. It just doesn't. I'm glad it. I'm glad it still resonates to people. Sort of maybe now. I don't. I have no idea. But it, it, uh, pro tip, it does. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Great. That's great. That's great. That's totally great, uh, it, but it's like it's not. It's not. You know, the customer isn't always right. It's like it's like right. yeah. it's like this is this is this is just us spewing out our angst and ideas and blah blah blah. And that's that's all it is. And like, if if people like it, rad. If people don't, I totally understand why you don't <laughs> like it. Right. Well, talk about my suicide. dad doesn't like it either. It's like you know, I get it. You know, that's what I understand. But he did get to see you play a big packed ass show in the middle of uh, San Diego Park, which is pretty rad. <laughs> that's uh, right. Well, not that that's what that, so that sort of made me look a little better. Like, uh, oh yeah, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not completely wasting my life. I mean, it's like, it's like, there you go. There's four thousand people for you, Dad. Are they to see me? <laughs> 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 no, it's like you know, you get, it's hard to get those dads. They're hard. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, my, uh, it's just, just to give a, a little context, <laughs> my, my dad's reaction after seeing, uh, my first band and I guess second most, uh, second most long lived band, whatever. Okay. As I was like, I was like, ah, how'd you like it? Knowing full well, he's like a rocker. Like he saw Alice Cooper band in their heyday, Deep Purple, like saw the Ramones at Winterland, right, right. And then, awesome. yeah, a cool rock and roll dad, long story, but like wow. his, his review of it, yeah, that was loud. <laughs> oh yeah, I heard that one before. <laughs> and I was like, "Ah, oh, come on!" <laughs> first time we went to DC. First time we went, Jay played in DC. Like we 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 uh, played the nine thirty club, the old one, which is uh, oh sure, yeah, yeah. I got shit hole. And we played there, and like uh, yeah, we got to meet some of our DC heroes. Like Ian was there, and blah blah blah, and like. Uh, I think it was like Chris Bald was backstage, or like the guy from the face, you know, et cetera. And he, he's this towering guy, and he's like, he's like, that was really loud. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. Oh, come on. It was like, <laughs> That's what he said. So that was my first uh, contact with my DC heroes. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, well, you're not wrong, but. Uh, I mean, that no, guy... that's, an, that's an insult. That's not, that's, that wasn't a compliment. That was an insult. And, that, and that's like, yeah, whatever. There, there's a. You yeah. want to play with us, motherfucker? <laughs> it's like, let's see who comes out on top. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because there's like a, like, Jell Biafra wants to kind of be like, you know, Conan, I really like Replicator, but do you have to play so loud? And I was like, Jello. Fucking dead Kennedys, oh, man! Are you fucking kidding me right now? Really? <laughs> no. You know what? They, I don't think that, I think the dead Kennedys are, were, were sophisticated musicians, and they did not play that loud. And and yeah. um, and uh, and it was really important for the lyrics to be heard. And yeah. He's not. He's not like a power belter singer. He's like he's a you know that weird thing. Yeah, the vibrato. And like, and like the thing about the, 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 one of the great things about the is, is you don't really you need, a, you need a lyric sheet to understand what the song's about, and they're all about something. It's true. It is true. So and, um, I get where he's coming that from. That guy's a great singer, man. He's he a is. Great I, singer. I, I actually I, I think he's underrated in the uh, pantheon, and he gets a lot of grief uh-huh. because of who he is now. It's spoken. He is. I don't know if he's underrated. He gets grief. Why does he get grief? Well, I. You're asking the wrong guy, but I mean, he got like you know beat down at Gilman that one time for not be, for being a sellout or something like years ago. I mean, like oh, you, oh my god, that yeah. place is retarded. I mean, that was ridiculous. I, I mean, let's not forget, like I oh I, I live god. in Wisconsin now, but I'm a Bay Area dude, you know. So it's, oh, you live in Wisconsin? Where you live in Wisconsin? Milwaukee. That's why I saw you. Oh. I saw it at uh, um. Oh shit! 
Uh, where the fuck did you play? Uh, not um, that weird place. I don't know. That was weird. I'm, I'm blanking on the name, but you, you know the one I'm talking about, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's funny. The place, yeah. the place that wasn't Cactus Club, because the original was going to be a Cactus Club. <laughs> I re- I remember the place. It was it was uh, Mad Planet. Mad Planet. Okay. Was yeah, Mad Planet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is great. That was a great show. And um, cool. Yeah. I, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but I do remember. I, I do remember the events. The weird thing is about uh, for me is like I never remember the actual show, ever. I don't think I've ever, I can remember. I can remember. The, I can remember the the, uh, the what the organ pavilion one. I can remember that. But most shows are just like there's like a blend of just like ooh. But the stuff that goes on around them. That you remember. That I remember. I remember, I remember them all. What do you remember about <laughs> Suicide Invoice making that record? That's a good one. Uh. Almost nothing. I don't. I don't. <laughs> well, the, well, that was the, the. I mean, that was you'd already. It wasn't like Al- the record nothing. had been made ahead of time, right? Like you, it was a little. No, but there, there are there are some songs that are left over from uh, from the first uh, round that Jason and John did. So, like like that song "Suicide in the Voices" was left over from that. It just didn't. Get, like there's there's there was just a bunch of songs. So that 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 like that song specifically was left over from from uh, the first time um, I don't remember that one I remember more uh, Autumn in Progress because it was more that was super bandy that was with that Mario was like, uh, who also was on the show oh cool yeah we bullshitted about records yeah. for like the last half hour uh, probably more like the last hour of the show honestly <laughs> <laughs> but like uh, talking talk about records, talking about records. Yeah, yeah. Oh, just well, I mean, we're both record nerds. That's Mario. So, yeah. yeah. That guy's exactly. like, that guy's like, <laughs> Guess what's gonna like, happen? He's that great. guy's like an authority on that stuff. He's like, he's like, he's like, if I wanted to listen to him bad, I couldn't figure it out. I just ask him, and he just would know. And he's just like, he just knows everything. It's crazy. And that um, was a, that was a changer for the band too, because I mean, he's got a different style. Well, I, I right? like I said, I remember that. Be- I just, I just for some reason I do. I don't know why. Um, you, what I remember about Suicide Invoice is I remember the tour that we had, um, and it was like the best tour we like, I've ever been on. It was like it was like a, that particular tour. Um, Jason and we took be having the Barracudas and just the like Jonathan Carnick first now, oh, man. It's just like just like beautiful. Everything, everything was everything was great and and. Um, we did well. People like this. That was that was a, that was a, that was a really good tour. Um, that's that's how I remember about that record. The, the 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 second record I remember recording it. I remember going out and the tour being a little less attended. <laughs> really? Think, that's interesting. Yeah, people, okay. It, yeah, it was like it was like we played a lot of shows. Where we were there. Um. So yeah, people are fickle. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> was everybody into I'm trying to think of what everyone was into at that time. That was uh, uh mm. like was that when like all the dance like the gravy train oh, oh no that's when the gang of four ripoffs kinda of started to come out, right? That was like around that yeah. time. Yeah, well no, that was even before that. that. That was actually that's actually like first like that's actually like that's pretty early two thousands. Pretty early on. So it's like yeah. so, cause, like I live in New York and I like you know, all of them are here. Yeah. It's yeah. like a really Really super. Uh, we play with them, like you know, like uh, sometimes like Luke from the Rapture. They were super gang of forty. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like their that, that first um, that out of the races on the tracks EP. I thought that one was really good. Yeah, they were just they were just a three piece band. We yeah. played with them a bunch of times, like during the during the first two record thing. Or whatever. Um, there was Radio Four. We were really gang of forty. Um, well, there's a there's a bunch of bands. Seconds, even the, which uh, ended even up, the Yeah Yeah Yeahs are kind of like that. Yeah, it was, it was it was Seconds. I think was Brian's first band. Then he ended up in Yeah Yeah Yeahs and uh, Liars, yeah, the Liars. That's... The Liars. Yeah, the Liars. Yeah, the Liars were. Yeah, I I I saw the Liars once. I think. And I was like, wow, that's not gonna be that fun. Um, but you know, you rip off a band. That's a good band. Right? <laughs> but, and like with Franz Ferdinand ripping off too. And oh yeah, yeah, totally. Wasn't there a lot of people like yeah they were just they were just like the most for one for that the, that little moment in history they were just the most bitten band and was like dang four yeah and then and then and then Andy Gill like 
I was like, hey, maybe we should re- record some of these songs and cash in on this. And uh, mm. that that uh, uh, is Return of the Gift. And it's got, um, what I remember, because it's, it's mostly like, you know, the good songs off entertainment, like best songs of entertainment. And uh, oh, because um, they, they weren't getting paid for those. Because they weren't getting paid like for it. Yeah, yeah. And Solid Gold. Yeah. And But they also recorded two songs that kind of rip. They're in that really shitty recording period where everything sounds like artificial and terrible. Uh, there's like one-off songs of the. Oh, like, like, uh, like, uh, oh, like we uh, we live as we dream alone, and I I love a man in uniform, which are often yeah, I love a man in uniform. That's one I was trying to think about. Like yeah, the, and uh, those those records kind of blow. <laughs> it's a different it, it's a different lineup too, right? Yeah, it's yeah, because it's they're bass like player. It's more disco-y, right? Yeah, exactly, and they have a, a a more like kind of like austere kind of like not band sound so they re-recorded them but they recorded them like you know like a band playing them. as a it, band it's actually pretty good like it's like those songs at least are I like i bet you it would be good i bet you it would be good yeah yeah that was that was the problem with just from in all periods of music it's like it's like it's all about what the technological thing is happening right. so like you, you you go to record in the studio and, and they're just gonna make you sound like the whatever the technology is you know it's like it's you know what i mean like all all fucking drums in the 80s sound like cannon fire <laughs> right. yes, as much as i love the ssc stuff like all those and spot every, records every like, every what? every band every every new wave band has a singer that sounds like shoot that poison i wrote through my heart they all sound like this and i was like just for the job. it's like why like, everybody wants to you know like, <laughs> all the bands from that period sound have that same voice yeah yeah sound? yeah totally <laughs> everyone everyone has the same voice and then you get the nineties. It's like it's like it's like mm-hmm. everything sounds like. Well, I think it sounds like James Hetfield. It's like the Yarl, the Yarl, yeah, the Yarl, the Yarl. Yeah. Everything sounds like that. It's like <laughs> it's it's weird. It's it's like. Uh... <laughs> Did you ever see uh, this? Is, it was on TV the other night. Ghost World, that movie. Uh, oh yeah, I watched. I watched the one that the Terry Terry was lying out was wide off. Yeah, yeah, it's like the Daniel Clouse, but um, like the right, book. right, right, right. Pretty good. Uh, one of Scarlett Johansson's first yeah, movies. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, yeah. That's, I think it's her. I think it was her, it's her debut. But there's that band. Uh, like they're, they're at like the Blues Club. And blues do, Hammer. He <laughs> Blues Hammer. Yes. <laughs> blues Hammer. Oh, if you great... like blues, you'll love Blues Hammer. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, well, I went down to the crossroads. <laughs> You know every shit song. Every every you know every shit song that I really love is fucking George Thurgood. George everyone Thurgood. Shits on, everyone shits on George Thurgood, and I fucking love George. Thurgood. You, you know, uh, some serious. somebody played me a, uh, you know, one whatever, one whiskey, whatever. One bourbon wants one bourbon wants cash, dude. Yeah. Come on. Somebody played that. You know, you know what that is, though, right? I mean, it's like, what is, what it's is a mashup it? of two John Lee Hooker songs. Oh, okay. But but somebody played that to me. Blind. House Rent Boogie and, or Blues or, and, and. Oh, okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Somebody played that for him and didn't say who it was, and I was like, "Hey, this is pretty good. What is this? Like, it's George Thorogood." I'm like, "No, but really, who is it?" <laughs> no, George Thorogood is really good. He's really he destroys. He's really good. That's right. They, they, and also, and also, by the, and also, you gotta like give him respect because like they came around in like like the early, or the late seventies, early eighties when when all that stuff was like, it was all about the cannon fire and all that stuff like that. They have two records that are like a rounder records. Yeah, which is a folk label, and yeah. and it's just the most minimal, honest recording of just like them tearing up these like, yeah, whatever. They're playing you know Hollow Wolf songs. It's like, it's like blues songs. rock, sure, but I mean, yeah. But it's but it's but it's it's pretty bluesy, and they 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 really they really they really do it well. I, and I I don't I think it's it's like a, yeah I don't, I don't think they're like. This are the same treatment as like the Red Hot Chili Peppers or something like that. Yeah, I think it's it, it, <laughs> like headline on Brooklyn Vegan. Another tomorrow. another band, another <laughs> band, another band. You as a Californian should know this. That 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 like I don't know how old you are, but the Red Hot Chili Peppers at one point were like a cool band. Yeah, cool. no, I, I'm. So... Every, they played with Black Flag and the V Puppets and blah 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 blah. They were a cool band. Yeah, no, nobody nobody talks no about this. it. I ca- I came in right as that changed, like right as that changed, and I was like, oh, mm-hmm. this is pretty good. Like again. Mm-hmm. Dumb kid in Modesto, right? Likes Sonic Youth and like Black Flag, and like, oh, this is pretty cool. Yeah, and then, like, call yourself a dumb kid, but like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like it was, it was just a their demographic changed, and people just wanted to distance themselves from that demographic, basically. Yeah. It's like, but the music was always 
fucking terrible. <laughs> um, it was always terrible. It was it's never good. Yeah, it's not great. No, it was never good. It was never good. <laughs> Um, but they sounded like they were fun to see live, and they sounded like they had an attitude. Um, yeah. Like, like, it was like they're... Well, and you got to think of the like things that happening at the time too, like Fishbone, who were always an incredible live band that was happening around the same time too. And sort of like, am I going to throw on a Fishbone record? I never saw them. I never saw them. I never I, saw they them. were phew, credit where credit due. That band, freaking slayed, because you had like. Like the parliament kind of aspect, but coming from like uh, like a punk rock perspective, you know. And I, I can't, I, I can't listen to a record. I'm sorry. Like it's just, this is not for me. Like it. <laughs> right. But that, I, that well, that's that's the problem. But I mean, I, well, it's not that's not the problem because you. It's like oh, I mean, you had to be there. So you know, sometimes, sometimes you like this band. You kind of like you know, the records aren't really gonna stoke you out that much. But like, but like if you were if you were standing in front of this band, they would like blow your head. They would. Off. They would. And yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's my impression of that man. I um, I actually knew the singer a little bit. I think it's no, his name. I can't remember. His name. Uh, Angelo. There, there was a band. There were. There's a band in San Diego called Daddy Long Legs, and there's lots of. I think there's a lot of Daddy Long Legs. And um. And uh, yeah, and and that guy used to come and hang out. So he would he would play with them all the time. Uh, Daddy Long Legs. Um, so I met that guy, and he was a really cool guy. But I never actually saw. Fishbone, another song. They're, I mean, like I said, credit where credits due. I'm not gonna throw on a record, but that fucking live show is like, like they could, they could, like you know, hold a master class. I was like, this is a good fucking live show, dude. Yeah, well, they, 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 they could play. Yeah, it wasn't like punk. It was like punkers. You can't play. No, they were, they were like, they were on it, and they had like the punk rock energy, but they had like musicianship. Where it's like, fuck me, they're like, yeah, they were like students or something, or, or their dads were like. Chess players or some shit. <laughs> right, so, they like, like they, that, yeah. they 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 just, just were really sickeningly good musicians, and that was that. Uh, also, in, in in punk rock, it's another thing. Is like if you're too good, it's like wow, that's that's a problem. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> totally, totally. Like and it's like the like the failures part of it. You know, like <laughs> that's like, like name a tr- punk rocker who likes Eric Clapton, right? You know. Like you try to rip off like the things you like, and then you fail. By the way, it. I do like Eric Clapton, and I think I think he gets shit on way too much. He's like really. He's like Hardbirds, man. He's like Cream. What, why is everyone like shit on that person all the time? Well, I described Obits mm. uh, to a friend as punk rock Yardbirds, which got him on board immediately. By the way, and I didn't feel that was exactly accurate. That is that is one of the finest compliments I've ever made. Thank yep. you very much. <laughs> I, and you know what? I knew you dig that. I mean, we were we were actually trying to. My, that that record, Roger the Engineer, is like one of my favorite records it's ever. Good. It's fucking. It's 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 just the most. It's it's so it's super punk. Yeah. Honestly, and it's like those guys recorded that record in an afternoon, and it's like they just. It's so fucking ridiculous. <laughs> it's so ridiculous, and it's like so great. The songs are so cool. It's just like one of my favorite. That's one of my favorite records ever. So good. It holds That's up too. Wanna... Holds up. Like actually, the last uh, like right before the pre-COVID times, I threw on uh, like in the in the van. I threw on some Yardbirds. Just didn't tell anybody what I was doing. And they're like, "Hey, what's this? It's good." I was like, "It's Yardbirds, man. Fucking rips." <laughs> they didn't know who the Yardbirds were. Uh, somebody in the in the van did. I'm not gonna call them out, but like. <laughs> poop, but poop. We don't need to narc them out. It's all right. Hey, but can you real quick talk about Auto in Progress? Auto in Progress, because that's like that's a real front-loaded record. Like all the all, like all, all the kind of all the shitty songs <laughs> on the second side. No, <laughs> no, I was gonna say like tempo-wise, like all the freaking you know mid, mid to fast tempo rockers are like in the front of that record, uh, and it's kind of wild. And then you have uh, like what, Plenty for All kind of buried at the back. Uh, was there a thought towards sequencing it? That was that like a. I don't know. You just, well, when you have a bunch of songs, you just you just you just play around with it and like try to sequence them so they they work. Right. Um, and there's the, when hot sex we play in blocks. We don't we don't we don't we don't write like a, like um, sometimes we'll write set list and, and it's like just a bunch of individual songs. We have blocks. Right. So like. Like usually, a, like yeah, like three blocks that just are just just these songs go together. So these blocks, 
it's actually easier to make a set list that way. But like, we have blocks that just like go together, and then like, uh, there's standalone songs or whatever. I'm sorry, I'm not asking what, your question. You, you were asking about Honor and Progress. Well, no, um, no, yeah, yeah, but like, like about the, the fact that like the sequencing, right? Like it's all like these, all these like badass, you know, <laughs> fast rockers like up front. And so it's kind of sequenced like a live set in that way, like where they're kind of like sitting together. I have right? to go. I have to. Look, I have to look at the, the track listing because I can't remember the uh, the order. Um, I don't know. Um, what's the What's the first song? So I think yeah. it's a uh, audit in progress. That's a it starts with a brain trust. Am I wrong about that? Hold on. Oh, that's a, that's pretty that's a pretty slamming song. Yeah, it's like brain trust <laughs> highlights retrofit. Like it's like it's, yeah, that's a, that's a that's a slammer block right yeah, there. Yeah, it's a total slammer. Right block. <laughs> Every time you see us, we'll play all those songs in a row. Every yeah, yeah. Time. And, and then I mean, it's like not like creative control is exactly like you know slow jam. <laughs> Afterwards, like <laughs> I like that song. We, we we don't play that much, but I like that song. Yeah. Yeah, text when you're done. I'll okay, cool. Well, and I guess I just, you know, Mario, different style, right? Like, badass in a different way. And uh, um, They're both... They're both so good. Really, really great. I like the tour... You might have done this multiple times, but I, well, you had uh, both of them come out. And you had... Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that was part of the, the, the whole reunion philosophy. Like, yeah. Uh, it's a little weird. It's a little hard carry two drummers but like um it was just like you know just that, that that sort of thing so like and it's still like i think kind of plays with both both drummers mostly jason though because jason's jason's like dedicated to it and he, he's got to do it and like also mario's in like a bunch of other bands yeah mario's got um earthless and freaking you know he's, he's a busy dude <laughs> mm. he's a busy he, dude. well he was well I, I think i don't know if he's still in off but, yeah, but off, he, off is a pretty freaking busy band too. <laughs> that's a I don't yeah. It's, that's a. Have you seen Earthless before? Uh yeah, man, Earthless is fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. I, I, I actually walked in on Earthless without knowing who the hell they were, and it was like, who the, who, who are these guys? What's this all about? This is awesome. And that was a really? great feeling, you know. That's crazy. Yeah, and then um, like immediately, I was like, "Oh, of course, this is, of course this is badass." All right, these guys, cool. Yeah, those guys are those are crazy. Um, it's such a weird band. Like you're like they're just sort of like <laughs> they're just like unconstrained by songs. And just <laughs> yeah, like they just works. do like it fucking works somehow. How well, because they're work? such they're, cause they're such work. they're such exciting musicians. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like uh, uh, Isaiah is, is a crazy, crazy guitar player. Like, I, and, and also he's like good taste. Yeah, but it's like it's just it's just it's just it's it's bananas. Sometimes you know, like when I see Earthless, I'll be like, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna go smoke a cigarette for a while, come back, <laughs> sure. And like, I mean, because because like because like it's just like it's just like it's kind of it's kind of it's almost like new age music. You kind of can drift in and out of it, and like and like come back to it or whatever. It's 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 really, but like there's some moments of like just transcendent yeah man they do some it's pretty special like they're a pretty interesting band like it's yeah they're cool they're really cool they're really cool and mike the bass player is like really to his credit like like mike kennedy and driver too just like holds it down yeah just keeps it keeps it keeps the glue there it's like really really good it's like it's like the heartbeat <laughs> and everything else happening around it yeah just like just, it's just the foundation it's the ground it's like it's like because and they'll all, they'll all go back into whatever um, motif or whatever riff or whatever the fuck it is. But like, uh, they just they just get so out there. It's, it's great. It's really good. We should play like that. I think um, I, I'd love to hear. I think Obits was a very underrated band. Like again, punk rock Yardbirds, right? Like, you know what? I do too. I, 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 but the problem with Obits is like is like. Look at us. I mean, it's like, it's like, it's, it's like, there's, I mean, oh, come on, know, Rick. no, it's like, it's like, a, it's like a bunch of old guys. And it's like, and that's the problem. That's the problem with that already. That's a problem. But like, we're kind of, we're kind of, we were kind of local heroes around here, but people like us around here. Um, and we did, we did okay. I mean, but yeah, it was, it wasn't, 
but I, I thought the band was really good. I like the band. I still do. I mean, I think like there was a, a through line um, to a lot of you did like kind of like what I like about CCR. You know, just like good, well-written songs that, like, you know, there's some kind of weirdness to them, but it isn't, you know, that's it chugles a little CCR sometimes. Is super, a CCR you know? is a super inspiration for sure. Like, yeah. Like, but like, there's so many other, other inspirations. And like, the band, the band, the band could do the band was a really fun band because you could do anything. It's like things like you play with someone, you see what they did, and you're like, okay, we're gonna do the opposite of that. Yeah. And you could do the opposite of that, and also you could, you could play your songs differently or it is it's really really flexible so it's a, it's a cool it's do, a cool band do you feel like you got to do everything in that band that you wanted to do yeah yeah i did I to do a little bit <laughs> like did you feel like you like left anything on the table with that band creatively you think oh i don't know well at some point Somebody broke the seal on this a long time ago, where where you like you break up and then you could like get back, get back together again. So so I could totally we we, we totally play. We actually have a record coming out that's a live record. Oh really? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that that was uh, recorded in Brisbane, Australia. Um, and I like I was like I was you know my I was tasked to do the cover, so I was like I was like oh, I want to do the cover blah blah blah. Here's the, here's the here's the Spotify or well not Spotify but the SoundCloud link to the to the record. <laughs> right, I never right. listen. I Whatever never listen. Yeah. I, I'm like I don't. I do not want to hear this. I do not want to hear myself bombing in Brisbane. And I, I finally got the record with or the test pressing was like okay. So I had a few beers and like okay I'm almost to this. I put it on. I was like, shit, man, that's pretty. <laughs> okay, kind of, well, I mean, you guys were ripping bands, like, I, like I, I was like, I was like, it was like, because I didn't at the time. I did. I mean, like, this wasn't a setup recording because, like, it didn't. I didn't know that we were being recorded. Yeah, it was just like whatever. Which the is, set was which is yeah, yeah. We just played. I was like, it's, no, I was like, oh, shit, this is pretty good. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> this is a pretty good record, actually, and I, actually, I like it better, a lot of it better than like the actual studio versions of the songs. It just came out really good that's good. so that's something that's coming out then yeah it's coming out like a, a month or something like that um, nice nice it, it, it's, it's a trip because uh, in Savak so Rob plays with a friend of mine Michael Jaworski that I know from Tour. oh Jaws oh yeah Jaws yeah Jaws is great mm-hmm. like, but I know him yeah. from the west coast I know him from like Seattle we played uh, with his old band Virgin Islands oh shit yeah, small world, right? Because I was like, oh, this yeah, is like it is. world's it is, small, it is a really small world, yeah. <laughs> I, so just, if you if you don't mind, and, and this has been rad, man. This, this is super rad. Can you just talk a little bit about Jericho Sirens? I think that record rips. I think it's, um, it was a nice surprise. Well, you, well, you want to ask a specific question? I, can go I, I, I do want to ask specific I'm questions prepared. about it. So, okay. for me, it, it almost feels like a couple of songs like almost could have been like Jehu songs or something, right? Was that ever like something like, that was on the that, table? No, I mean, you, I don't know. You just come, up, you just come up with what you come up with, and it like, if it sounds like that, okay, cool. But you know, if it's, uh, I just, we just we just started playing and like started writing songs, and I went to, I went, you know, I remember going to going to San Diego and hanging out with John and like like trying a couple of songs and just. Record some, we record some songs in Philadelphia. I think I think Six Wave Hold Down we recorded there. Yeah, yeah. Um, just kind of the the hitty song from the, from the record. Um, it's a good tune. Yeah, we just yeah, and then we recorded the rest of it in San Diego and like just uh, just, just trying to like see if we got still got some uh, something to listen to. I don't know. Just like. And I, I think, like, considering it's a bunch of old dudes, like, like it's, it's, it, it isn't that. It's pretty I mean, it's pretty great even if it's not a bunch of old dudes. But, I mean, I think, I think it holds its own along with the entire catalog, which is there's no weak links as far as I'm concerned. It's all pretty great. And uh, Well, yeah. that, well, that's, well, thank you. That, well, that's what you want. I mean, I mean, you don't want to be, like, I don't know. I, I got to see like the Buzzcocks like I, I think in Spain like like uh, 
not long before Picelli died or something. I was like, I was like, it's pretty good, but it was like, it was like, it just, it just seemed like pure, like nostalgic. Nostalgic, yeah, because it's like, oh, they're gonna play what, you know, what do I get? They're gonna play. Uh, but I also I got to see, it. I also got to see Wire at the Casbah. Mm-hmm. So, there was like forty people there, so I got, I'm like right up on top of Wire, watching Wire play, and it, it was most. I think the only person I was missing was uh, uh, what's the guitar player's name? Uh, uh, Colin he, Newman. No, he was there. Uh, Colin Newman, the bass player, uh, uh, God. Uh, and the drummer Robert go to bed. Up uh, with the, Graham Lewis. Yep, right, like right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. One of the most intense rock and roll personages and or whatever. What you, uh, yeah. And, and personas and, and like a, a persona presence too panic. just yeah like, oh just just yeah. like that guy's that guy's like that guy's like uh super crazy bruce gilbert i was thinking bruce gilbert he used to play guitar. bruce gilbert yes yeah, he, he wasn't there he wasn't there he wasn't there but every, every but the, the rest uh he had someone else but the rest of the uh it was, it was wire and and, yeah. and they played wire songs and they like and wire and they had like colin newman had like a an iPad is mounted onto like a mic, <laughs> like a like a like a yeah like a sort a, like of hardware mount. stand or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, so yeah. He, yeah. <laughs> so he would just pull up the lyrics and read them off. Of the, and I thought, if this if this is anybody with wire, this would be totally lame. <laughs> right, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't. Fly. But yeah. with wire, it wasn't. It's just like the wire. Just like wire is a a real living band. They they are they that they don't they're not just nostalgia. They 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 play. They care. They 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 feel as passionate about maybe not as passionate they're not they're the old men. But like but but they but they definitely it's a real band. It's a real living thing. It's not just like it's not just like a, we're not like like you know like did you ever hear that record? Perform the, the oldies. What, that, what's that? That record send they did in like a like two thousand like three or something. Um, I know. I, 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 it's hard to keep with the, keep up with. It's hard to keep the solo it. projects. It's hard, yeah. it's hard to keep with all this stuff. Like sometimes people will send to me, and I'll be like, okay, Grand Lima solo record. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, so the reason why I bring it up is because for me, like, and it's usually like it's usually like this is pretty cool, but like I was like, eh. Like there's a lot of stuff on that record send that like is a I think it's like a compilation of EPs and stuff like that but like it's like as good as like chairs missing or like pink flag where I'm like fuck yeah like these guys like this has it no is. right what's to be this good. Again? What's it called again? What's it called send. again? Send. Send. Okay, yeah. dude, I'll listen. I mean, it's as good as chairs missing. I mean, like up there, you know, it's it's like I would it's, it certainly beats all that like you know bells and cup and like manscape and all that kind of like regrettable okay okay <laughs> I'll, I'll check it out i mean i send okay I'll, I'll i'll check it out i mean i i root for wire i mean like, wire is like yeah it's awesome. never bad it's all it's always interesting and there's a record called change becomes us it's pretty interesting but that's all old songs that i guess they abandoned way back when and okay they went back i never heard that either i'll so. check that out i never I, I don't i just i root for this band i, I love this band i think it's great um i was such a privilege to like actually get to be able to like Stan Farm. You know who else was a really privileged to take the Stan Farm was fucking Robin Hitchcock. I got to see, I got to see it. Yeah. I got to see him like a couple times just just playing his just playing his guitar. It's him. And like uh it was that same level. Just like just like actually more. Robin Hitchcock was better than where. Uh, he, he's 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 he, I laughed, I cried, I just well that's good one. Um, <laughs> it's a powerful dude, man. Like, no, it was, it was amazing. Like everything he's, everything that came out of his mouth was like, just like, oh my god, this guy is genius, man. He's just so great. It's, it's like that guy's, that guy is definitely one of my heroes, man. That guy is incredible. So one, one of the last things, and having let not much to do with uh, Robin Hitchcock, but you did a thing. I think it was what's that, a Tumblr or something that like uh, you had sort of like this. Uh, Punk rock flyers, like a history of like beautiful oh, failures, yeah. basically. <laughs> like here's how this sucks, but how it's awesome at the same time. I thought it was the okay. coolest series. I thought it was like so cool. Okay, so what happened with that? This is my one of my my two forays into like social media, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. But, but like, okay, so, so so basically, what happened was I saw this this guy's site, and they had like all these. Uh, 
sort of very sort of a clean uh, all Helvetica like like uh, like a graphic knockoffs not knockoffs but like good sort of flyers from 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 classic punk shit like minus red black black blah, blah, blah. old classic but all yeah yeah right but all Helvetica all type the whole thing was like it was like it was very well done. Um, because Helvetica is, is the Swiss type base. That's their, that's their invention. And I was just, but I, but I was also like, I was also like, this so misses the spirit of the entire thing. And then, then I found a bunch of flyers from, from the actual shows and from, just from shows in San Diego. And there's, the flyers are so fucking lousy. They're just, <laughs> they're just, they 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 could not be uglier. They're just so bad, and I, I'm certainly guilty of making lots and lots of really bad punk art, really bad. And I and I, I was like, this is what this is about. It's like this. So it, it was like it was almost like historical revision with me. Like it's like oh, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like it's like they they try to it was like cleaning up this this really organic, messy, stupid thing and making it and making it like uh like like it was something to be put on a pedestal right. and not you, right. you know what i mean it, it, yeah. it, was just, it, it wasn't like that it was that, that these things are like that it, it's it's uh they're organic and ugly and weird and and punk rock i have more negative memories about it than i do have positive ones it's like it's but i still love it because that's that's my people. That's all I have. You know, that's, that's, that's all I got. Well, for me, wh- one of the things I loved about that was that it kind of just made me sort of examine something that it's not that I never thought about it, but I never quite thought about it in a way that you know, you were just like pointing it out, like not in like forensic detail or anything, but it's like, hey, look at this. Yeah, you know, like this is like there was the love show through. Right, but it was like not like. We talking about like this is what I just said. Yeah. Oh well, I'm just. I, I mean, I'm just. It's just like it was. It's life. It's just like it's a messy, dumb thing, and I, I just, I just don't like 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 people cleaning it up and making it look 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 at like look like it was some. Glossy. Like I don't know, like it's like like it's like history. I don't know. It's 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 just it just just it just bugged me. Um, that. Oh, it's probably just from the internet, but like, um, I, uh, I didn't like that. Um, just because I knew, I knew what it really was and it wasn't, it wasn't like Helvetica. It was like, yeah, I, like, I like that perspective. Rub on letters, maybe at best. Yeah, yeah. And like, and then like, it, it, it was just a, the whole thing was a mess. And, the, and it's, uh, that's, that was kind of the beauty of it. I liked it. I thought it was really cool, man. No. Okay. Um. <laughs> well, and I thought it was cool because it came out from perspective of not only someone that would know, but someone that has like a, a sense of aesthetic to it. But then also, you know, provided context, and you know, it was cool. Well, it was, I th- I mean, it's, well, it's it's like it's it's like it's like tough to like separate this like this this thing from its the wheat from the chaff, as it were. Like you'd like your uh, it wasn't all wheat. <laughs> it was. <laughs> It was mostly yeah, yeah. chaff. It was mostly chaff. It was mostly chaff, and there was a little wheat in there sometimes. Like you kind of like you know, like, like a rat, you like dig out the the wheat from the. Uh, um, I have you know great memories of all these things, and like, and I'm sure that people are still. I hope people are like you know, doing something cool now or whatever. I'm sure they are. I'm too old to know. Um, too old to be included, but. I just don't like when people, when when uh, when like uh, things like that are sterilized. You know what I mean? I do. It's like uh, it's wrong. Not true. Well, Rick, this has been awesome. Thanks so much for for doing it, man. This is this is uh this has been a blast. It's great having you. A blast, huh? It is. <laughs> I mean that earnestly. Come on, man. <laughs> this this is this has been a good time. I uh, I. I'm really honored to have you on. Oh, cool. Well, I'm honored to be here, and uh, you want to do it again? 
So, so one last thing. This is a canned question. It's the only thing I ever ask people that is a canned question, question, right? It's the last thing I ask. You can choose to interpret it however you like, but why do you do what you do? <laughs> why do I do what I do? Oh, I don't think Spanish. Para entretenerme. <laughs> You know what that means? I don't. To entertain myself. Oh. Rick Froberg, thanks so much, man. Come on, Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the. I'll see you in the apocalypse, man. <laughs> Sounds good, brother. All right. Later, days. Take care, man. All right. Ah, uh, there he goes. Rick, goddamn Froberg.
uh, luau for you. A little band called Drive Like Jehu. Perhaps you heard of them. <laughs> Featuring my guest Rick Froberg. Doing some singing, a little bit of guitar despite his uh, modesty towards all that. Uh, before that, we had some Obits, two headed coin. Underrated band. Like the like those guys a lot. And before that we had a uh, the first two songs of the first Hot Snakes record. Uh, Automatic Midnight and uh oh, the song after Automatic Midnight. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have it in front of me, sorry. My bad, y'all. Some shit. Oh sorry, yeah, uh, if credit if credit is what matters, I'll take credit and then automatic midnight. My bad. The name of the show is Conan Neutron's Protonic Reversal. Thank you so much for listening to it. Thank you so much, Rick Froberg, coming on the show. The only social media he's on is Instagram, and it's great. So if you are on Instagram, get to it. Uh, Rick underscore Froberg. So obviously he's a visual artist. So worth it. Yeah, name of the show is Code Neutron's Protonic Reversal. The show airs on Radio Nope. Thursdays, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, 6 Mountain, 5 Pacific. ProtonicReversal.com for the archives. 50,000 watts of time. Patreon.com slash Protonic Reversal uh, to get episodes sooner. $1 a month will get you there. No ads, no sponsors, no kidding. Greg Son, you're coming in for a third round next episode, so that should be fun. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening to the show, sharing it around. It, it helps people find it. Appreciate it. Stay safe out there. Take it easy. I got my radio on. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now?
a transmitter circles the globe in search of a listener. Can you hear me now? If there's no one there to receive This had been a real- 